in which, which our program, program is embedded is engaged in the work, work of a global, global church. church. Um, we're, we're trying to collect, collect preserve, and share, and share the, history the history of the church, of the church for, the for the good of the church, church and for the rising, rising generation, generation is part of our mandate. mandate. Um, um, and you and can, can see a few examples of where we are around the world. Uh, this, uh, this is, is not, not an exhaustive, an exhaustive list, list of every, every property, property and place, and place that, we that we are engaged in. in. The, the blue, blue are historic, historic sites, sites um, where, where we might, might have, have inter um, um, trained, trained interpreters, interpreters giving tours, giving tours, as well as, well as a few, a few of our designated, designated historic, historic meeting, meeting houses. houses. The, the yellow, yellow are records preservation, preservation centers. These are local archives managed out of different areas, areas of the church. So when things are being collected by church members, and church, and church employees, employees say in, in um, Chile, Chile or, or in New Zealand, Zealand or, or in Frankfurt, Frankfurt Germany, Germany. And so instead of those, those materials, materials coming, coming to Salt Lake City, City right, they, they stay, stay local. local. And so, and so local, local historians, historians can, research can research those places, those places. and then, and then tap, tap into, into the global database, database that is managed, that is managed out, of out of Salt Lake. So, so if I'm a researcher in Brazil, I can do research on the church in Brazil, but I can also do research on the church in Estonia, all from Brazil. So, so, and again, and again that, is, that, is, that area is vastly, vastly expanding. expanding. And then and church history centers, centers are locations where we actually have, have um, staff, staff that have, have a larger archive. archive. Some, Some of our records, records preservation, preservation centers, centers are really a closet, a closet with, with humidity, humidity control. control. And, and a couple, a couple of shelves. Of shelves. Um, um, but the church history centers, centers are larger buildings, buildings. We're more, more kind of, kind of intensive, intensive research, research could go, go on. on. So this so gives you a sense. sense. So, so it, it, it could be really easy to think, think that church history is only in the United, United States, States, right? It's, it's this, this Western, Western expansion, expansion kind of, kind of movement. movement. Uh, but, uh, but the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is actively working to collect the stories of Latter-day Saints across the globe. Which then leads to some interesting priorities. You know, you which, know, which, how do you how manage, manage thousands, thousands and billions, billions of stories? stories. So, so a little, little bit of the history of our, of our, of our, of our efforts at historic sites. sites. Um, the 1880s, um, the 1880s church, leaders, church leaders, including John, John Taylor, Taylor, started the process, process of memorializing our pioneering, pioneering past. past. So, the so the first, first place, place that, that was, was actually, actually preserved to, to, as, as a place of memory, memory was, was a cemetery in Mount Pisgah, Iowa. This was, this was a cemetery, a cemetery of, of, of a Latter-day Latter Saints buried in the 1840s, 1840s as they were coming, they were coming from, from Iowa to Utah. Utah. Um, and, and about, about 1884, John, John Taylor, Taylor then church, church president, purchased, purchased a small piece of land and erected, and erected this monument. This monument. Um, so, um, so we have been, been doing, doing this for a very, very, very long, long time. time. Efforts, Efforts really, really got going, going however, in about 1900. In the first decade of the 20th century, the church purchased its first major historic sites. Um, um, largely, largely centered, centered around, around the life of Joseph Smith, Smith the founder of the founder movement. movement. The, the, um, um, they included the birthplace birth in, in Vermont, Vermont, the family, the family farm, farm in uh, New, New York, York, and, and Joseph, Joseph Smith's um, place, place um, where, Joseph where Joseph died, died in, in Illinois in 1844. 1844. So, so again, again, so these, so these sites were all purchased between, between about 1901 and about 1910. And, and um, um, missionaries were stationed, stationed at all these places, places to live in, in to, take to take care of the farms, farms um, and to do those work, work, and then, and then slowly, slowly over time, time, the interpretation, the interpretation of, those of those places got going. going. Um, um, like I say, those, those first sites, sites were really, really about, about the life of Joseph, Joseph Smith, those foundational, foundational moments, moments to this to faith. faith. And then, and then in the, the mid-20th mid century, century um, the next, the next movement, movement kind of begins. begins. So, so in the mid-20th mid century, century, the church starts acquiring and interpreting and telling the stories of other places, places that's still, still largely U.S. centric. US -centric. So, so I, I, I um, selected here, here cohort, cohort in the, the um, um, central, central Utah, Utah. The, the church is owned since the 90s, Ben? I should know the answer to all of these. Um, the um, Mormon the Trail, Trail Center, Center in historic winter quarters at Florence, Nebraska, we like very long titles. Um, the, the, so, so this is one of the starting off points, points for the, uh, the Mormon, Mormon Trek. Trek. West, West Utah, Utah, this is just outside of Omaha. Omaha. And then, and then the, bottom the bottom is a visitor, visitor center in San Diego, San Diego voted, voted to, the to the story of the, of the Mormon Italian, Italian. That the church, the church has, has had a, a structure, structure there since, since the 1970s. 1970s. Um, and, um, and again, for many years, it really has been about focused on the growth of the church in the U.S. The westward expansion. The, the foundational, foundational places, places of Joseph, Joseph Smith's life. life. And, and so, so we have we constantly, constantly been wrestling with this question of whose story do we tell? Which, which site gets privileged? 
Uh, and, and so just so a few, few examples, examples um, that, uh, I that I thought of as I was working this presentation. presentation. Um, we, um, get we get offered probably, probably a historic site a month. month. People, People come, come to us and, us and say, oh, oh, you know, you know a, member a member of your, of your church, church lives here. here. You should, you should want, want it. it. Um, <laughs> or, um, or a house near, near Brigham Young's last, last camp in Immigration Canyon is up for sale. You should buy it. We get, we get one, one, least one, least one of those a month. month. For the, and I've been here almost 18 years, and, years and, and it's, it's been, been going, going on, on that long. long. So, examples. examples. Whose Who stories, stories do you tell? tell? I, think I think this is a bigger, bigger question, question for all of us working in preservation. How do you How pick, do you pick your, your project? So, so an example, the Will Wilford Woodruff's farmhouse. Extremely important. You know, Will Wilford Woodruff, the fourth president of our church. Here in Salt Lake City, this is, I think, an 1860 structure. Really, really significant, significant place, place to grow the growth of, of Utah. Utah. Or, or do we, do we focus, focus on Brigham's Beehive House, house. Um, which, um, which was, was the home of three presidents of our church, church and the headquarters of the church, church from 1853 to 1917. Um, so, so we decided, we decided as an organization that we want to focus, focus more on the, this, this organizational, organizational story. story. Not that the Will Wilford's home is not a merit, but we want all of our community partners to be involved, to be involved in saving, in saving his, his house. house. Um, forks, forks, which, which one, do one do you pick when they were all built by members, members of the church? Of the church? So, so Fort Desert, um, which, which is a state, state site, site. Um, and, and, and I'm excited, excited to, hear to hear about all the things that are going on to preserve that, that fort. fort. Um, the, um, the church has chosen to preserve a cohort in central Utah. Utah. Um, again, they have both have incredible stories, but we have to be very selective about which stories we tell. Or, or which, which landscapes, landscapes do we focus, do we focus on? on? Um, sorry, sorry, I added one from Wyoming. Wyoming. Uh, Devil's, Devil's Gate, Gate in central, in central Wyoming. Wyoming. Uh, or, or Big Mountain, Mountain the top the of the Great Canyon. Canyon. Both, Both have, have stories, stories right, right, to the expansion, the expansion of, of, of the West. The West. Um, we, we as an organization are involved in the preservation of Devil's Gate because we own the land that is immediately adjacent to it. And, and we acknowledge, we acknowledge that, that Big Mountain is incredibly important. important. So again, again, we hope our community partners, partners step, step in. in. So, so these are the questions, questions we're asking all the time. All the time. What, what do you say? What do you not? Can't, can't, I, we, we all know we can't, can't save, save everything. everything. So where, so where do, we do we focus? So we decided, we decided as a department to um, focus in on a specific part of the mandate. So the church history department's mandate is a mandate to collect preserve, preserve and, and share the history, the history of, our of our church. And we're, and we're constantly, constantly working through, through uh, which, which are the are critical, critical parts, parts of that. So, so I just want to give you a sense of uh, our purpose, purpose statement in historic, historic sites. sites. Um, we've, been we've been working on various, various purpose, purpose statements, statements for many, many decades. decades. Um, um, this, this is, is where, where we are right now, now that the church is historic site is sacred. I'm not going to read all this out loud. We all are literate people. But this idea that they are historic sites are witness, witness, a material, material witness, witness of, the of the power of place, of place and of the and stories of the yard, that, that these sites express, express our beliefs, our beliefs and, and express our beliefs in God, God express our beliefs, beliefs in community, and, and um, that, um, that they, we also acknowledge that our historic, historic sites, sites um, enrich, enrich the lives of people. people. That your, your life, life is better, we hope. hope. When you, when you can stand, stand in the place, in the place where it happened, when you can, you can step, step back, back in time. In time. So, we so we talk about, about immersive, immersive learning, learning and evoke a sense, sense of awe and reverence, reverence. And, that and that they inspire us to be, to be better, better people because, because we're, we're interacting with the place. place. And, I can, and I can imagine all of you all working, working on historic places, places preserving places, places, have some of those same kind of ideas that I want to change the world because I visited a place that matters. Or I want to preserve a story because, because of, of a, something, something I've learned, I've learned in a historic, historic place. place. Um, so um, to so give you a sense of what we're doing in the United States, States these, these are the 23 historic, historic sites across, across the, United the United States. United States. It's a nice, nice line, line, almost, almost like, like we travel here by wagon, by wagon. <laughs> all the way, <laughs> all the way across. <laughs> across. Um, and these and historic, historic places, places range, range in age from 1820s log structures all the, all way, the up way up to, to modern, modern visitor, visitor centers, centers um, that, are that are 10 or 10 15, 15 years, years old. So we have so a, we have huge, a huge range of dates, dates materials, materials, we have log, we have log structures, structures, we have brick structures, brick structures stone structures, some, some terrible ether structures, structures that someday, someday I'll, I'll fix. fix. Um, and a little, a little bit, bit about, about our staff. staff. So, so for many, many years, years, I don't know if anybody knows the name Don Anders. 
Don Andrews was, was hired by the church, by the church in the, church in the mid 1960s to do, do the archaeological excavation of the Nauvoo Temple, Temple site. site. Uh, uh, and, and he retired, he retired at 46 years of church, church employment. employment. For 30 years, Don, Don managed, managed historic, historic sites, sites of the church, church all of those sites, sites by himself. By himself. Uh, um, and and in, in, so, so what year was this done? done? Um, this, this picture, picture was, taken was taken in kind of, kind of December, December of 2011. Uh, uh, this, this is, is our, our first staff photo. photo. When Don, Don retired, retired, that, that took that's that's two replaced, replaced on. on. Um, um, this was... This was uh, um, <laughs> So this, so was, this was taken inside, inside the burned out Cold Tabernacle. That was one of our first staff photos in the entire group. group. Um, and uh, we, have we have expanded, expanded considerably since then. then. Um, so, so this is kind of our numbers, numbers that we're at today. today. Hopefully, Hopefully you see that. that. We currently we maintain 23, 23 historic, historic sites, sites 210, 210 historic properties that we've talked about in a couple of minutes. We have 27 full-time employees. Managed, managed some, some involved in some way in preservation historic sites. sites. Um, 15, 15 time employees, we have three interns, interns and then some senior missionaries, missionaries and, and um, product, product managers, managers assisting, assisting us in this. So, so from, from dawn, dawn to 27, to 27 um, in, 15 in 15 years, years is pretty, is pretty good. good. And then and we then have our missionaries on site. We could have, have no, just, just go to the next side here. Almost 500 volunteers at our various historic sites. Across, across the country, the country. Giving, giving tours, tours maintaining, maintaining the facilities, the facilities um, doing, doing evening, evening theater, theater productions, um, playing, playing banjo, the, banjo, the whole, whole range, range of, of, of people um, doing all, all of that work. work. So that's, so that's a, very, a very, very, very brief, brief overview of what we're doing in historic, historic sites. sites. Again, Again and, and the next frontier for us really is um, it, global. global. How, How do we really Leave that, that U.S. US model, model and expand, and expand it to really, really impact, impact kind of a global, global community. community. So, so I wanted to give you just, just a couple, couple examples of some projects we've been doing in Utah or have recently done in Utah. Utah. Uh, the first, first up is, is a, we are trying, trying to do cultural, cultural landscape reports of every historic site that we own across the entire program. Cultural landscape reports and historic structure reports. So I need a lot of people to do HSRs. I only have 400 buildings beneath them. So Let's, Let's get to get work. To work. Uh, <laughs> so this, so this is, is a CLR, CLR that was done a few years ago for a cohort, trying to help, help us understand, understand that cultural landscape. landscape. Um, as as it, it, it is a mixed-use mixed site. site. That site, site is currently being farmed, farmed and, and we also do tours there. there. And, and you have an industry going right past. A forest fire almost took out the site a few years ago. Um, got um, very, very, very close. close. So how do you manage, manage right, the natural, natural resources, resources in this area, area with an with interstate, interstate, with thousands of visitors, with, with, with farm escapes, escapes, and, and a site that has changed, changed over time. time. So we're, so trying, we're trying, to trying to understand, understand that, that as we move forward. forward. And we're, and we're trying, trying to do to similar, similar, really in-depth really in research at all of our historic properties. If you've ever done a CLR, you know that take often take a year or more to complete. Um, um, and then, and then the, of course, we've been in archaeology, archaeology yes. Yes. So now we've got to you know, get, into, get that into that before, before we make any changes, changes to the site. Uh, uh, next up uh, is we're also, also trying to take all of our historic sites online. online. Um, um, this, this is a massive, massive project, project just in itself. In itself. Um, so, um, this so this is um, two, um, two pages from our seven historic sites. sites. The one in the back you can see is what to expect when you visit the church's historic sites in southern Utah. So this is the basic landing page. What are the opening hours? Um, and, then and then we have, we have some, some um, specific, specific sites that get into exhibits, exhibits about, each about each of the buildings, buildings to give you some context, context either, either before, before you come, come to take a tour or if you're, or you're never, never able, able to take a tour, tour. Um, we're trying, um, we're trying to, create to create web experiences, experiences that, will that will help. We're also, we're also um, starting, starting a, well, we'll start start during COVID, 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 COVID was a really, really great, great jump for us to get into virtual tours. Our historic site office, the office site closed. But we but had we hundreds, hundreds of thousands of visitors, of visitors take virtual tours of our sites during those, those years. years. So we're so now we're trying, trying to figure out how to um, get out of the reactive panic mode of COVID, COVID virtual tours, tours into something, into something that's actually sustainable, sustainable moving forward. forward. And then and the then last one you know, I want to talk, talk about, about uh, a project that we're just starting at the restoration of the Beehive Lighthouse here in Salt Lake. I'm really excited about this one. Uh, we've, um, done, we've done, and the last, so, so we did a historic, historic structure, structure report on this, on this building, building about 2008. 2008. Uh, we've done, uh, we've a, done cultural a cultural landscape report. report. The Beehive House and Lighthouse are, are National Historic Landmarks. landmarks. 
and, and city, city landmarks, landmarks as well. As well. Um, um, these, these are adult buildings, buildings in the 1850s, 1850s among the oldest in the state. In the state. state. And, and um, considering, considering how, how old they are, are the adobe is in pretty, pretty good shape, shape but, but it's also 1850s adobe, adobe and, and it means a lot, lot of work. Of work. Um, and so, um, complicated with adobe, we now have, have multiple periods of significance. significance. So this, so this home, home, this was, this the, home was the home of and his family, family until, until the 1890s. 1890s. Um, um, and so, and so we want to tell the story of not only Brigham, Brigham but, but his many, many wives, wives. Uh, including the wives of Snow, Snow and Zion and Dan 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 who were among the leading, leading suffragists in Utah that are here trying to tell the story at early women's history. We also want to tell the story of later occupants of the home, 20th century occupants. So the challenge of um, wanting, wanting to tell, to tell a 1930s, 1930s boarding house story, story as, well as well as the home of a prophet at the president of our church who lived there in 1918, do that, that at the same time, time we're trying, trying to tell, tell 1850s, 1850s stories. Story. So, so it's going to be really, really complicated and really, and really fun. fun. Um, and, and yeah, yeah so, so it's, it's, it's a really, really good great challenge. challenge. We're just getting started in that. You know, you know try, we're, we're doing, doing some investigations, investigations figuring, figuring out just how, just how bad a shape the adobe is in, doing the, the, um, the, the mock-ups of how, how to fix it, it. And, then and then just starting our exhibit planning, planning on how, how we do how all, do all of, this. of this. So um, there will be a lot, be a lot more, more coming, coming out of this, this um, as we get into the project. Plus the added complexity of, you know, being right in the center of downtown, there's like no street access. We'd have, We'd to, have shut to shut down State, State Street, Street to do <laughs> something big, which, which is, is going to be a huge problem. problem. So, so um, a, 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 a just describe this way. We have 47 rooms in these two buildings. Um, with, uh, and we just removed um, all, all the artifacts in the house. We have 7,000 objects that had, that had to be cataloged, cataloged packed, packed, moved. Then now we have to research 7,000 artifacts. And then we'll probably put back another 3,000 that are totally different. So, so that's, that's my very, very, very brief review. We're going to take a break, break now and get some, get some questions, questions about, about our historic, historic sites. sites. I just overwhelmed you. you. <laughs> okay, wait, what do you what want to know, know? Kelly? Okay. Okay. So, do local historic houses that are sort of being, I don't want to say abandoned, but not used by the church or those fall under the decision making of your group, or is that going to a higher level? Hold, Hold that, that question, question because, because that's, that's part, part two of this presentation. presentation. We're going to talk, talk specifically, yeah, yeah, we're talk specifically about, about our meeting houses, houses and places, places of worship, worship that, that some are in some are not. Yeah. Okay. 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 Josh, Josh is going to ask another question. question. <laughs> uh, how do you how address, address or what, what kind of thought process and analysis do you go through when dealing with the tension between these sites and historic, historic artifacts, artifacts and, uh, uh, and especially, especially the, the, the sites, sites that are continuing to be used for like everyday practical purposes mm -hmm. and, and the programmatic and, and all the requirements of that, that use compared, compared to the, the yeah. 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 And I, I, I think, I think that's, that's the same problem that we all deal with. with. Uh, uh, you know, because you want your old buildings to look old, but I also like running water in them. Um, so, so not, 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 not Josh. Um, and so, and so one, one thing we actually start, start with um, on all of our projects, all of our, all of our projects, projects, is we start with a program. program. How, How do we, we want, want this building, building to be used? used? And so, and so as, as we get into, into the design, design of a renovation, renovation or, restoration, or restoration, we try, we to, try to consider all of those uses. uses. So if so it's only tours, that means we acknowledge we'll never use this for a public event. Or, or if, if we, we know, know that we, that we need, need a visitor amenity, amenity in this space, space we're going to modify, you know, we'll, you, kind you kind of do all this in this kind of dance, dance of how, do how do you maintain historicity, historicity while trying, trying to keep things functional. functional. Ideally, Ideally, you, you, you want buildings want to be, to be um, flexible, flexible enough, enough that, you that you can, can, you can have, you can have some, some of that built in. One thing we try to do is try to bring historic sections forward is that we want to operate a model that once if it's a restored room, it will, it will never, never change. change. Right? right? But, but we, we, all, we also know that after the fifth time you've taken that tour, tour you're kind of done, done with that narrative. narrative. We've kind we've of moved on. on. And so and we're so trying, trying to design flexibility in those spaces. spaces. So, so, for example, example the Beehive House, House Project, we know that 
when we, we reopen, reopen that, that site, site for the for first, first five, five years, years it might, it might really, really focus on the story, but there might be another story that comes along later. later. And we and want we to modify, modify that, that space. space. So we're trying, we're trying to design flexibility in so it can, so the story can change while keeping the story change. How much, how much of that, of that is, is in exhibit design, design and furnishing, furnishing and interpretation? And how much, how much of, that of that is in the actual, actual you know, structure, not a fixture of furnishing? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's where the structure reports, reports really come in handy. Hand. Hand. You know, you what, know, what, what, what themes, themes really, really are, are fixed? fixed. Um, so, so an example for the Lionhouse, Lionhouse project. project. The Lionhouse. When it, when it became, became LDS University, University in about 1900, and they removed, and they removed a, good a good chunk, chunk of the interior wall partitions to turn it into university. The structural engineers are not happy with that. Lost a lot of our um, but, but so, so now, now we're faced with this question: if we, if we, if we restore, restore it back, back to the way, to the way it was when it was Brigham's bedrooms, we lose that LDS University story. So, so we're actually, we're actually I, think, I think, cautiously choosing to restore it to, to that LDS University, university phase, phase. Um, and, then and then trying, trying to, to perhaps echo the Brigham, Brigham Young bedroom portion, portion through, through exhibit. exhibit. You know, so, you know, maybe, so maybe there's, there's a strip, a strip there's, a there's a color change, change in, the in the carpet, carpet or, or we build that a little header, header kind of suggests where the wall had been. But there's other spaces we're going exactly the opposite, where we know that this the primary story significance we want to tell is, is about, about an event, event that happened in 1970. And so, and so yeah, yeah, while, while the change, change happened in 1920, 1920 that's that kind of cool, cool. We're, we're going to ignore, ignore that, we're going to document, document that change and take, and it, back take it back to 1970. 1970. So, I think, so I think it's, again, it's significant, significant, right? right? What, what stories, stories do you want to tell? What are we trying to preserve? Sometimes it's materiality, sometimes it's floor plan, sometimes it's a design aesthetic, and trying to figure out what the story is. Then that then needs to, to how, to, how save to save it, and it, and and it, it varies, varies for me every single every building that I work on. So, you know, that, no, that kind of answers, answers your question. question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious if you have about what, what stories, stories to tell at a space and then yeah. the uh, uh, development and furthering of your virtual space in this conference. We can't provide those stories on site. Uh, just uh, so, so we don't wait for five minutes until the next, next. Hey, you know, <laughs> you know yeah. 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 yeah, 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 but you can still be providing like that yeah. yeah. in, in another fashion, fashion. Yeah. Uh, 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 for those for facilities, facilities and not, and, and, and have the board, more yeah, realistic yeah. Stories. yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think that's the kind of preservation is going, just, just in general, you know, how, how do you get people into spaces that they physically can't get into? You know, so you know, it's, it's either, either not, not safe, safe, you can't, you can't afford, afford to go, to go there, there, it's capped at 15, 15 people, people a year. year. Um, and for, and for me, me, the challenge is that there's, there's nothing, nothing as good as being, as being in, in the space. space. Right? right? And so, and so can, can, you do, do, so can, can you do something, something virtually, virtually that, that approximated, approximated enough and kind of get a sense of it without going too far? And I think the industry in general is wrestling with that balance. You know, you but know, we could, I mean, we could, we could do, do all of Salt Lake City, City and VR and tear the whole town, the whole town down, down and start, start over, but that would be that would terrible, be right? right? You want to be, you want to be, be in the city. city. You want to be, be in that space. space. So, but, but we, also, we also, you know, you know anyway, that's, so that's a bigger discussion. Let's do one more thing. Yeah. 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 So the, one of the chimneys on the Beehive House, house partially collapsed, collapsed in the earthquake, um, and, and um, child masonry came, came in within about, within about two weeks, weeks of that of the earthquake that fixed it. it. Um, the building actually made, made it through pretty, pretty well. well. Consumers are cracking, cracking and, and some, some minor, minor kinds of issues. issues. Um, it's, it's been, been a little, little scary. scary. Now we've opened up walls trying to. Determine, determine our, our scope. scope, but, but it's, amazing it's amazing that it did come, come through as well as it did. We have, we have some interesting hinge points, points that, 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 that we didn't, didn't expect. expect. So, so um, we're, we're calling, calling this, this we're, we're calling this a structural stabilization, stabilization project. project. Um, it's, um, it's not, not a seismic, seismic upgrade. upgrade. Um, again, again, not every option is looked at for seismic. You basically destroy the building to try to save it. So we're going to try to do, you know, some gravity loads where it's possible. Some basic, some basic things, things to stabilize, stabilize but, but why don't, why don't we don't want to go seismic because, because we'd lose, lose the very thing that, that, that we're trying to save. Did the building survive a collapse of chimney? Did it, did it cause any further damage? It actually kind of swelled, so we lost probably a dozen bricks onto the roof, but 
It was pretty minor. It was pretty minor. It was pretty It's weird how the seismic impact, you know, did things. You know, 19 south and 50 east. That, that town, town, you know, that, that neighborhood, neighborhood just didn't, didn't survive, survive well. well. Magna, Magna didn't, didn't survive well, well in some parts. parts. But then, but then you, know, you know, a, a small, small chimney, chimney where my boss was born. But, but, but you know, he was, he was I, I, I joke, joke he played without a mouthpiece for 100 years, years I would have gotten tired, too, to throw that down. So, yeah, so it's interesting kind of how that size of model works. Okay, so I'm going to get to Kelly's question now. It's like about meeting houses. Just a little bit of background. I can, I can give, give you a five-hour five lecture, lecture on history of meeting house, house design, design, but that, but that is, is a different, different topic, topic for a different day. day. So, so the, the first, first Larry Sane worship, worship meetings were usually, usually held outdoors, in, in homes, homes, or in, in schoolhouses, school or, or stores, or, or wherever, wherever you can find a space, space big enough. Um, so, so this is a small replica of a schoolhouse in Ohio from the 1830s, a separate church meeting room, and then an uh, uh, early, early image, image of, of uh, Joseph, Joseph Smith preaching, preaching in the middle of the trees and not doing. So our first meetings were really outside. And then we decided about 1836, let's maybe go inside. Let's build our first hall. And so the House of the Lord, we call the Curtain Temple today, they call the House of the Lord, completed in 1836, the first purpose-built Latter-day Saint worship, worship space. space. Um, and um, they tried, tried to do a lot of things. things. And so, and so every, every building, building since, since then, then designed, designed and built by the by church, church reflects, reflects back to Kirtland in some way. way. Either, Either in um, construction management, management or, in or in floor, floor plan, plan, or in or style, or, 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 or a, you know, you know, philosophical, philosophical approach, approach design. design. But in that hundred and however, however many, many years, years I'm story, not a math, math person. person. 170 years later, years later, 90 years later, later um, a, a huge variety, variety of style, style and floor plan, plan and use in the 1830s. 1830s. Um, um, so, sorry, sorry, I think one building in Idaho and three in Utah. Just, just I can't, I can't help it, but, but um, um, four, four of our designated, designated historic meeting houses. houses. So, so in the bottom, bottom right, right is, is the Pine Valley meeting house in, in uh, Pine Valley, Utah, Utah construction, construction 1872. And the, and the center, center is the second board here, here in Salt, Salt Lake. Lake. It's about, it's about seven, seven south, south and fifth east, east. Um, completed, completed in 1907. 1907. And then, and then the, uh, the top, top is, is the Montpelier, Idaho, Idaho Tabernacle, Tabernacle, finished, finished in, in about, about 1921 ish. Give or take. Give or take. Um, um, and, and then, then what, I what I grew up calling, calling the Dagoda on 45th South and about 27th East in Salt Lake. Salt Lake. Um, um, 1960s, 1960s um, Jackson, Jackson and Sharp, Sharp designed, designed the building. building. Um, um, all, all of these are, are built by Latter day Saints for Latter day Saint congregations. Um, and, um, and all, all of, of them, them have been, been preserved, preserved because, because of the efforts and interests interest of, of members of the church. Of the church. So, so the church's, the church's uh, interest in preservation um, really got really going in the 1970s, 1970s as, part as part of the greater, greater national, national movement, movement towards historic, historic preservation. preservation. You know, you know the, the response to urban renewal, renewal um, um, lots, lots of people, people lost very, very important buildings. So, so uh, yeah, in, in the early, early 1970s, Florence Jacobson, you also know Florence. I'm good fan. Started, started um, what, what became, became the historic, historic sites division, division of the church. Of the church. Um, um, Paul, Paul Anderson, Anderson was hired, was hired um, by Florence. Florence. Um, he, was he was an architectural an story and exhibit, exhibit designer, designer um, to, to start, start the, the effort, effort to help preserve, preserve historic, historic meeting houses. houses. And then and Alan, Alan Roberts, who was hoping he would, would be here so I can say nice things about him, was hired by Florence in the 70s to create the first catalog of significant historic places in the church. Um, that, um, that first, first list, list created, created by, by, by Florence and Paul with Alan's help, help um, netted, netted 58 buildings, buildings in the entire, entire church. church. Um, and in the, the 1970s, 1970s, I would estimate the church, church owned somewhere around 10,000 10, buildings. buildings. So, so that's, that's not, not a lot, lot of places. places. And, and these, these were really the, the most significant, significant places, places in their mind. mind. Um, they're going to get very, very U.S. focus, very U.S. centric. Um, so, so they, they, they started, started kind of, kind of policies, policies and working with, with the, the, the church building, building department, department to preserve those, those 58, 58 buildings. buildings. Um, Fiends and Rolls and Fell and everybody, everybody retired, retired or left for other, 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 other jobs, jobs and, the and the list, list kind of died. died. Um, um, and, and in 
uh, and the, the 90s, 90s there, there were a few things, things, you know, few buildings, buildings preserved, preserved um, but it was, it was really, really kind of, kind of well, well, I live in an, an old ward, and I like this one, so let's save it. it. It's not, not a great, a great way to approach preservation. So, so in, the, in the year sense, sense um, so, so if you go if back to that staff photo, right, one of the missionaries that was volunteering, volunteering for was a man named Ray Luce. Luce. Um, Ray, Ray if, you, if, you, if you know that name, name has written a couple of the technical preservation briefs for the National Register. I think you're really on how to do a building less than 50 years old. Uh, Ray, uh, Ray came, came to us as a missionary, missionary in 2010, 2010 to help, to help us revive, revive our historic, historic properties, properties list. list. And with, and with his, help, his help, and then I, I got a master's, master's degree in preservation, preservation at the same time, time we, we updated, updated the list, list. And, we're and we're now ready for 210 buildings, buildings in the entire, entire church. church. It's, it's still nothing. nothing. We're up to about 18,000 buildings total. But 210 is a lot better than where we were. Um, um, and, and we are, we are trying, trying again, again to go, to go more, more global. global. So, so here's a few examples, examples um, that, I that, that I like that, that I, you know, that I, 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 I don't have to pick for. for. And I'm a 200, 200 favorite, favorite children. children. Um, <laughs> so, so the far, the far end, end is the Wilshire Ward, Hollywood, Hollywood Tabernacle, Tabernacle in Southern, Southern California, California designed, designed in the 1920s, 1920s by Pope and Burton, Burton, a very prominent Latter-day Saint architectural firm. firm. Um, uh, in the in center, center is the High Park Chapel in London. Um, designed, um, designed in the, in the 1950s, 1950s by Thomas, Thomas Bennett, Bennett, who would go on to be knighted for his for contribution to um, rebuilding, rebuilding England after the war. war. Uh, uh, at the, the top, top right is the El Paso Ward Meeting House, built in the 1930s, largely from, from displaced, displaced um, Latter-day Saints, Saints that have moved to Texas, Texas from the from colonies after, 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 after the Mexican Revolution. Um, and um, then the, the bottom is the Farmington Rock, Rock Church, Church, an 1867 building, building in Farmington. So you get, so the, you whole get the whole range. range. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll, I'll share it with you. you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did the, the church embrace like like, like, like an endeavor in some very different objective styles? Did they not let whatever amateur group or love community? That was, that there, was there to come up with the build, the design, the structure. Is there really a fascinating history of that? Yeah, I've been going for five, five hours, hours about this. this. Yeah. yeah, so, so um, um, until, until the 1960s, it was, it was up, up to you, you as, as a congregation to finance construction of the meeting house. house. If you if wanted, you wanted the, the church's assistance, up to maybe 50% of the funding, funding, you had to you play, had to by, play the by the church's rules. rules. But if but you didn't need the money, you could build whatever you wanted. So you get this huge flowering and variation in floor plan and style. And, and it's, it's also, also really, really fascinating, fascinating to see regional, regional trends, trends and national, national trends, trends coming, coming in. in. I, also I also can see evidence of, well, this well, bishop did that, that board, board and really liked it. it. So, we took it so, so we went back, back and hired the same architect and stole all their best ideas and, and, and did all of that around. So I say we could go on for hours and hours and hours the evolution of LDS meeting house. So as far as the creation of this list of 210 buildings, I might say about two thirds of them are in the U.S. and Canada. And the rest and the are rest in other, other countries. countries. Um, we, also we also developed, developed a set of criteria. criteria. Um, um, most, most, most of our criteria, criteria follows, follows the National, National Register, Register. Uh, but, but we wanted we something, something that's kind of specific, specific for us. So, so one of the one great, great debates, debates in the National, National Register is do you do you represent the samples, samples or the best, the best of? of. Um, and, and we decided, we decided well, you know, plus I just can't sum it up of Putting, putting a standard, standard plan, plan building from the 80s on our list. list. It, it just, just feels, feels wrong, wrong to me. me. Um, <laughs> so, so we are we kind of doing, doing the best stuff. So, so we describe these buildings, buildings as, as those that are kind of the crown jewels of the system. Of the system. Those, those buildings, buildings that represent the best of who we are, that teach us important, important evolutionary steps in our worship and in our design, that are part of larger trends. Um, so, so, for example, for example um, building, building I'm really I'm excited, excited about that's on our list, list is the Death Branch building in Ogden. I don't know if any of you are familiar, familiar with that building. building. Fantastic, Fantastic 1915 prairie, prairie style, style building. building. It was, it was from, from what, what I can tell talking, talking to historians, historians who study the deaf community, community among the first purpose built buildings in the country for people with disability, which is a remarkable thing to be doing in 1915. Plus, it's just architecture is really great. So, I got Two, two of my criteria, criteria for one. For one. Um, another, another thing seen about, about this list is, is integrity. integrity. It, needs it needs to look, look like it did when it was built. 
um, kind of joke, joke, if you have to squint and lean, lean a little to tell that there's an old building in there, there it, it probably doesn't have enough integrity to make the list. list. Um, now, now, I have, I have, I have, I have a whole sub-list sub list of buildings in it. We could, we could get, get them, them restored, restored, I would, I would add. add. But I but have, I have to, to balance all of those, those needs. needs. Um, part, part of the of challenge, challenge that we have, that we have again, is that this is our list, list of criteria. criteria. Um, um, but I, I, I imagine all of you have this too in preservation. It takes a lot of very gentle persuasion. You can't just come in with an iron fist. Say, you must, you shall. You know, you know, bad things, bad things will, you know, you'll, you'll be smited, smited if you don't. If you don't. Um, um, it, takes it takes a lot of persuasion, persuasion and gentle work, work and, and influence and in helping help people see the impact and the benefit of doing, doing this, work. this work. Do you have a comment there? Yeah, you, you said, said if, if, if we, we restored it, then, then you would consider, consider putting it on your list. list. Yeah. Yeah. But how what if we don't restore it the way you want it restored? So how do we yeah, know, yeah. How do we know, know we're, we're restoring it in a way that we're going to Yeah, yeah. So, this so this is a, a, that's, that's a great, great question. question. Um, the, thing the thing that we're that also working on is that church history does not, not manage, manage these buildings, these, buildings, these, these 210, 210 houses. houses. Yeah. They, they are, are maintained, maintained by the Meeting House Facilities Department of the Church. And they have a set of policies and processes and procedures that they follow. And, and I, I, I hate this. this. That, is that is not, not a, good a good way, way to, live. to live. So, so what, what have we been have working, working on? We created, created a list of 200 buildings, buildings, but we've, we've also been updating, updating the policy documents. documents. So that, so that any meeting house, house um, that, is that is being renovated, renovated can, can be folded into this historic properties policy. And a lot of it is relationship building. So I probably spend half of my time working with meeting house architects even, Even on non historic, historic buildings, buildings. If they, they call me about, about any, any random, random question, question, I love, I love it. it. You know, you know, um, you know, you know hey, hey, the local, local jurisdiction is requiring this type, type of, of, of planting or this type of shingle. Or, 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 hey, is this building on, on the National, National Register, Register or, or whatever? whatever. I'll, I'll try to work, work with them so that no matter the age of building, we're following sound principles. So because I also don't ever want to come back and say, you know, if I, if, I, if I had been aware, aware of that building, we would have done something different five, five years, years ago. ago. You know, you, you want to be so proactive, proactive that you never you have to restore a building, building, building because it's always been maintained well. well. Um, we're, we're kind of in the land, land of we're trying, trying to induce some terrible, terrible ideas that were done in the 60s. Um, um, but I hope we don't repeat those, right? That we're constantly trying to be better and learn from those things in the past. So, yeah, so really we're trying to also update the policies and the process documents to embed preservation principles in, in all, all the things that we're that doing at headquarters. headquarters. And it'll take until every time for people, people to think of it, that's a good idea. idea. The reason yes, is because we're restoring, we're restoring a church, church that was built, was built in 1907. 1907. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the 50s, 50s, the town, the town owned the building. Mm -hmm. the town mm -hmm. owned the building. Mm -hmm. So they so tore the front of them out and made it into fire station. And so now we're putting them back together as a church. Yeah. You want to go shake the guy in the 60s, he thought that was Oh, I want to do it with white. Yeah. I want to do it with white. Yeah. You guys ran it down. So that's what you call me. Yeah. 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 Ye
and, and fill, fill those, those with grout, with grout and concrete, concrete and then, and then um, um, size and stabilize, stabilize the building. The building. Uh, it, was uh, it was really, really messy, messy, but it was, but it was really, really the only way, way to keep that, that building standing. standing. And, then and then we talked, talked about unkind things, things that happened in the 60s. In the 60s. Uh, we, had, uh, we, had we had one interior, interior photograph, photograph of this building, building from the time, the time it, was it was finished. And then, and the, then 60s the 60s happened. And it, and it got, got very, very pink. pink. Uh, <laughs> um, at a wood wall built at the front, and it was just... There were curtains on the windows that would make really great Bontrap family clothing. It's terrible. Um, um, and so, and so we, we worked, worked with CRSA, CRSA and, and restored, restored the interior of this building. building. Um, and, this and this was, was only possible because of the method, method we chose for its structural upgrade. upgrade. Um, and, um, and when we first came, came in, I said, hey, guys, we're going to put the lights back on the ceiling. We're supposed to Edison bulbs on the ceiling on that front wall. And the facility manager was like, that sounds like a terrible idea. It's going to look like a It's going to look like a circus in there. What, what are you, are you thinking? thinking? Um, but, but by the end of the project, the project like, okay, okay, this is, this is, this is good, good, I guess, I guess now. now. Um, and, and, but it's used to the change, right? right? This, this is stayed a tabernacle for that community. community. Um, another, another one. one. Uh, do you all uh, remember, remember the strangeness, the strangeness of, 2020 of 2020 after all the apocalypses? The windstorm happened. The stained glass window in the historic second ward sustained some pretty significant damage in that windstorm. And... So we, so we hired, hired a stained glass window, window conservator, conservator out of California, and came, came in and took, took the window apart and, and repaired all of the damage from that, from that, from that windstorm. windstorm. So you go in that building now, you can't, can't tell it's broken. broken. But again, but again sometimes, but sometimes you're, you're like, like, well, I know, I know a guy who does stained glass, glass. I'll, just I'll just have him come, have him come, come, and, come and fix the window. No, like, we're hiring an AIC accredited window conservator to come and take care of this building. Um, and again, and again this, this would not have been, been possible if we hadn't been building up those small relationships with people over the years. years. Uh, uh, another, another one. one. So, so in the, the 1920s, 1920s Avon Fairbanks, Fairbanks designed, designed a monument to the silkworm industry in Yelcrest. Last year, the Daughters of Young Pioneers who owns the monument, but it's on church own property, called me really concerned. This monument needs thousands and thousands of dollars of repair. We can't do it. I'm really, I'm really worried, worried it's going to come, come down. down. So I went so out to look at, at it. And I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. Um, so, so we submitted, submitted a work order, order through our meeting house facilities, facilities group and just, and just took, care took care of it. It was $1,000, $1, but the DVD was, was so terrified. terrified. But again, but again we, we managed, managed to repair it following, following conservation techniques. And the was restored, restored and cleaned up, and, and the DOT is extremely, extremely happy with the work that was done. So a lot so of it, too, if you're doing interest in preservation, preservation, is that community partnership. partnership. Finding, Finding the right the partner, partner, getting, getting the, right the right advocates, and then working together. And, 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 and really, and what is the least expensive way to get something going another 50 years? You know, sometimes I like to go, I don't want old things shiny and new, I want old things old. You know, you know, a little, little bit of a creek, creek but, but clean, clean, right? right? Another, Another example. example. Um, the Sully 27th, 27th Ward. This is, this is on Forest Avenue, Avenue and Street. Street. Um, we, did we did a seismic upgrade on this building a few years, years ago. The 60s, the 60s were unkind, and somebody, somebody put, put aluminum, aluminum storefront doors, doors on this building. building. Bless, Bless them. them. <laughs> um, and so and one so of the things we did is, hey, those doors are actually about ready to be replaced anyway. Um, and, and since we're since shutting, shutting the building, the building down, down doing a seismic upgrade, upgrade, can we, put, can we, can we restore, restore the doors? doors. And, so and so I had, I had to beg a little bit, bit um, for a for couple hundred thousand, thousand bucks on the budget, budget to, put to put the, the oak, oak doors, doors back, back on this on building. building. And, that's and that's what the front door looks like now. It's a little teeny tiny thing, right? But I didn't say it's an overall scope of the project, but we're also then trying incrementally to do these kinds of changes. So if the doors, the doors are ready, are ready for replacement. So let's, let's put something, something back, back on that's right. right. If you if need you to need repaint, repaint the building, the building let's, let's do the paint colors, colors that are right. right. If you need if a you new roof, roof, let's know do it incrementally. So, so the, the, a, a full restoration, restoration building might take another, another 20 years, years but I'll do but it incrementally. incrementally. I'll fix the doors here. I'll do the carpet there. I'll structure the upstairs there. Yeah. I'm curious about this. How that to find out about the door contract? Like, are you just kind of like they come to you about that, or were you like? I'm always, I'm always watching. watching. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of like, 
yeah, yeah, so, so we, were, we were doing a major, major seismic, seismic upgrade, upgrade on this building. building. And, and I was, I was a part of that project team because of the seismic, seismic upgrade. upgrade. And so, and so when they said, okay, what else is on our project list? Every single build, all 210 buildings, I have my list of everything else I want to fix. And so sometimes you incorporate it into a project, and sometimes you don't, you know what? This one will wait. I, I want, want to spend, to spend that, that money, money here. here. So, so I told, I told you, know, because, because I restored doors, doors here, that meant there's, a, there's a, something, something, another, another building, building on my list, like that, that one's going to be pushed off. off. You know, because, you, know, because you, can't, you can't, as ideal as would be, you can't do everything at once. Everybody's made a horse for it. Thompson? It's a local guy, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think, I, think um, I, I, remember, I remember, I think he's based in Tremont from ever making stores. Does he, he make doors or is he, 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 he a cabinet? He's a cabinet maker. maker. Yeah. 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 He think he did a pretty good job. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, like, like, yeah, like, yeah, I, I, that's what I'm saying. Now that we've been doing dozens of these projects, I have people that I like, people that seem to be doing a good job. And there's sometimes I'll, we'll test somebody on something small and say, you know, we've never used you before. How are you? And you and start you off something, something small, small like a set, set of doors, doors and so that you don't, you don't, you don't give, give them an entire window, window restoration, restoration project, project so that only to find out they have another job. job. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask um, what about it's, it's for doors like that would be? I don't remember of that. It's not. It's not a lot comparatively. Yeah. 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 I'm not still in charge of it. So comparatively, it's yeah. Yeah, Dave, Dave, would you, would you, what would you guess from doing like that? that. Yeah. Yeah. Another question? Did you uh, have your original, your original drawings, drawings for those stores? We had a few photographs only for the building. Yeah, yeah, for this building. Um, so, the so the church does have a pretty good database, database of architectural, architectural plans for eating houses, houses, but it's not complete. Not complete. Um, um, and, and some buildings like this, they were just built built by the local congregation. So there so might not have been, been any more plans in it or plan submitted for permitting. Do you have the requirement that people that do work in projects and rebuilding for you are LDS? No. 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 We uh, don't, don't require church, church membership. membership. And sometimes, sometimes we almost prefer you are not a member because there's, there's so many so times your members are like, well, well, I want to I want donate, donate this to tithing. tithing. And then it and then becomes, it becomes a, little a little more problematic. problematic. So we so want to find the best person to do the best job who's going to follow the right, the right kind of kind preservation, preservation ethic, ethic. And, and, and who is willing, willing to put up with us as a client. client. We, are we are a pretty, pretty tough, tough bureaucratic, bureaucratic client, client to work, to work for. for. So, so find, find that, that blend, blend of technical, technical skill, skill, personality, personality and, and I mean, it's, I mean, it's complicated. complicated. So, so Josh, Josh, you have a question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's, what's the best, the best way, way for us to interact with local facilities, team managers? To escalate, to escalate these, these things, things. Yeah, so yeah. You, we notice, notice like, like Springville Memorial uh, mm -hmm. Park or Springville State. Mm -hmm. uh, same, same thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so I, I, I know, know so, so every facilities, facilities manager in Utah, Utah I, know. I know, and I have it. I have a relationship with. So, so if you are dealing with, with uh, an LDS meeting house issue in Utah, Utah that you don't, they don't feel, feel like is getting traction in your community, community please, please call, call me, me, and we can. And, we can, and then, then we'll decide, you know, again, priorities, what's going on, and where we need to spend our money. So I'm also really hard hard at work on. Creating, creating a penetration ethic, ethic in our, in our meeting house, house facilities, facilities department. department. So everybody, so everybody in that management, management line, I'm, I'm, we're educating and, 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 and kind of working, working on, on that side as well. As well. And I think and that's, that's going to fight in all of your communities, communities as well. well. It's, it's, it's really easy to go, go into a community right, and, and yell and scream and rant about save this building. But I've learned that it's never productive. Right? If you go and say, hey, I have an idea that I think could help you. Here's, here's a resource, resource. Here's, here's a person, person to talk to, to. Let's, let's build, build this, this together, together. you get a lot, a lot better, better product at the end of it. So a lot, a lot of, of it really is just spending, spending time, time and working on relationships, relationships and smoothing, I, I, I make a lot, lot of cookies, cookies for people. Um, <laughs> another, another project, project that you did, St. George's Tabernacle Restoration, but feel the building dedicated to be 76. As we did a seismic upgrade again on this building, seismic is a huge problem, we talked about that being picked up. We decided we had a very significant, we wanted this building to look like the way it did when it was dedicated. 
in the 1870s. And so we and so did the finishes, finishes analysis, analysis, and um, um, there, were there were two paint colors. colors. So the, so green, the green, we think, was their identification. dedication. And about every, every five, five years, years, they would, they would, ten years, they would swap. They go from green to red, then back to green, then back to red. And that went off about 40 years. They couldn't they make their, make their mind, mind up. up. Um, um, and, and so, so when we, were, we, were, we knew this was going to be controversial in St. George. George. <laughs> Say George, 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 everything's, everything's controversial. controversial. Um, and, so and so we did we really, really terrible, terrible renderings. renderings. And, and I gave, I gave these, these two options, options again, with the paint, paint sampling, sampling um, to them, to, them, to our church leadership. leadership. And said, and which, said one which one do you want? want? Person, Person who's first name is Elder. elder. And, and he picked, he picked the one that was green, which is the original, which I thought was awesome. So, so now, now when people come to me and complain, complain about, about the green and that the leaders of the church were horrified at what you did, I'm like, like, no, they, no, they, they picked, picked it. it. That's, That's the green. green. So, so another, another little trick, trick then, then as you're working, working on, on this is what the building looks like now. now. As you're, as you're working, working with local communities, the more that you can empower your community to feel like they own that decision. So the better off you're going to be, right? So on this building, I worked, I worked with, with church, church leadership, leadership who has an interest, interest in St. George, George, who loved, who loved it. it. And you and work you with your with local community members, members. You, work you work with anybody who, has, who, has, who cares, and you're going to get, get something, something that everybody, that everybody can, be can be excited about. about. I still get complaints about the tower, tower but, but I know more. Okay. So another example, seismic upgrade, the Kingsville Tabernacle. As we were doing that project, we realized that the time capsule was going to be destroyed. We have to put one of the cores right in the middle of it. Uh, and, so, and so, it probably, it probably wasn't, wasn't the budget, budget, but we found, found a little bit of money, like, you know, let's, let's remove that time capsule, because, because that, that story is worth telling. telling. And, and there, there may not be anything useful, useful in it, but, but hey, let's, let's not, not destroy, destroy it, because, because we, didn't we didn't bother to take an extra day, day and dig this thing out of the wall. So, again, so monetarily, this is not worth anything. Some photographs, copy of the newspaper. Right? right, but the, but story, the story that it tells, that it tells about, about Kaysville. Kaysville. And that, and that, so that, so that extra, extra couple days of work created a connection, connection with this community. community. The thing the that thing I love the most, don't, don't ever put food, food into in time capsules, capsules people. <laughs> uh, the, the bugs, bugs ate everything, everything in the wheat and, and started, started eating the books, books before they died. died. Um, they didn't eat the barley. I don't know what that tells you about. But bugs ate the barley. The barley was in perfect condition. The wheat was... Very very eaten eaten by the time time about it. So, so again, again kind of part, part of a much bigger project, project but part, part of that, that preservation story and that and connection. connection. So when, so when we, we reopened the Kaysville Tabernacle, tabernacle um, just, just before, before we rededicated, we had, we had all these things, things out on the table. table. Right, right, everybody right, come, come and not touch them, them don't touch our facts. But you know, that moment of, oh, this reminded me of a story, and now you're people sharing stories about that place. Another couple. Did we did not. not. It's now so the, the time capsule is now the church archives. The, archives. the box has gone, gone back in, in. Uh, uh, but it's but been, been now grounded back, back in place. place. Yeah. yeah. We do like. Nope. 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 Um, because, because they're going to turn to, you know, they're going to look like that. So yeah, time capsules are an entire history of its own. Kind of a cultural artifact of the 20th century. So except for temples, we don't put time capsules in buildings anymore. Mainly because then people like me have to come deal with it 50 years later. And I'd rather spend my budget other places. Yeah. Do you know what kind of things? The weed. It was just weevils. Yeah. 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 I'm sure, I'm sure there's, there's going to be some forensic, forensic botanists botanist that will have a good time about that. Um, <laughs> another example, the Manti Bishop's Manti Bishop Storehouse, um, right on, right on um, Main Street, Street Manti. Manti. Um, um, kind of a standard, stand, we think probably, probably a standard plan, plan Bishop's Storehouse in the early 20th century. century. I can think of another half dozen of these still in existence in that kind of inner Mount West corridor. For many years, this was the pageant office. This is one of them. Um, um, and, and when the, the Manti Pageant ended, ended, the building, the building was, sitting was sitting empty. empty. Um, um, the city of Utah, Utah approached, approached the church and said, we, we want to tear it down for the new courthouse. Or, or, here's a crazy idea, idea. Let's, let's find, find another, another user, user for the building. building. So over so the last couple of years, it's been leased to a flower shop in Manti. 
uh, um, that, that our team, team helps identify, identify this other, this other potential, potential user. user. So, so here's, here's your other tip. tip. The, best the best way to way keep a historic, historic building stand is, is to keep it in use. use. Find, Find a home for it. For it. Um, um, what I'm, what I'm excited, excited about now is that, that we have, have been revisiting, revisiting that, conversation. that conversation with the state of Utah. So now, rather than demolishing that building, um, we are working with them possibly to put a preservation easement on the property that it now becomes part of the courthouse um, complex. Um, and so that building will be saved and used in perpetuity rather than, well, tear it down because it's in our way of what we want to do. They, they hate me when I say redesign around it. All right, um, another couple examples, and I'm going to pass it on to Ben. Yeah. Um, the Nanti Tabernacle, again, uh, seismic upgrades. Um, center court, the building, beautiful oolitic limestone. Um, one of the favorite things I found as we were going through this project um, is evidence of historic construction details. So this building was built in multiple Pieces phases over about a 30 year period. period. And what, and that, what that means, that means you, can you can see, see those, those, you know, you know the, the, the nailers. When they, when they built, built the walls in the 1870s, 1870s they, didn't they didn't know how big, know how big the freeze boards, boards were going to be. be. So they made so them, them big to be, to nailed, be nailed into. into. But by but the by time, the time they, they put the roof and the steeple, and the steeple on, on in 1905, it had, it had simplified, simplified considerably. considerably. And, and over, over the years, years people, people had covered those nailers with all kinds of terrible mortar and stuff, and they were rotting out. And so I asked the project team to leave them exposed as part, as of, part the of the history of the building. Of the building. And, the and the team was just, just aghast, why would you, you do that? You know, it's nailers, nailers. They're, they're ugly, cover, cover those up. up. And they and thought, thought it was so strange to say, strange no, leave them exposed. exposed. That, that is part, part of the history of the building. building. We went back and looked at photographs from about 1910, 1905, when that went on, you could see them in those early photographs. So it's a weird little restoration detail to take it back to that original they were able to find during research. And it took some convincing but, but the, the, the local, local unit, unit um, and, project and project team agreed to, to finally do that. Do that. Um, um, through the whole other story about the water that I'll leave for another day. day. Um, um, and our and current, current project, project, we are doing, we are doing a seismic upgrade, upgrade again, again on the local local tabernacle. tabernacle. Um, the, the tower, tower on, the on the west side of that building, building um, if the earthquake was to happen right, well, it was the earthquake that happened six months ago, that tower would have collapsed into the main hall of the building. And so, and we're, so doing we're doing a major, a major seismic, seismic upgrade, upgrade on, that on that tower, tower so it so will we'll survive, survive the earthquake. The earthquake. Um, <laughs> but now we, we have another, another problem. problem. The, the this building, this has, building has been in continuous, continuous change, change since, since, the, the, since, since it was built. Was built. So, so again, again, the walls, the walls were done in the 1880s. 1880s. The, the tower went on about 1905. The organ went in 1915. The expanded front went on in 1918. And then, and then, you know, the you know, 60s, 60s happened. happened. Um, um, classic tale for a house house. So, we're now, we're now so, so you can see, see this is, um, the, early, the only 19th century, 19th century photo, photo we have, have is that. that. And, this and this is, is um, about 1920. This, this is a state, state choir. choir. Um, and, um, then and then this, this is, is what the what interior looked like before we started the project. project. So, so one of the questions we're dealing with is, okay, what time period? What feels right? So if I take it back to the 1880s color scheme, that doesn't, that doesn't make, make any sense, any sense with, with the organ. organ. And, and I'm, pretty I'm pretty sure, sure I would be, would be run, run out of town, town if I tried to get the organ out of that building. building. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, but the 1920s, 1920s color scheme doesn't, doesn't feel, feel quite, quite right, right either. either. So, right, so, so we're, we're, we're still, still kind of wrestling, wrestling with, okay, with okay, what, what feels right for this building. Which may not be one specific time period, but the sense is that we walk and go, oh yeah, this is an old building. Um, so, um, we're so we're doing a little thing. So, so um, one of the things, things I'm excited about, about these pews on the main on the level, level were um, replaced, replaced with, with blonde, blonde oak, oak in the in 60s. 60s. You know, you know really, really awesome in the mid-century mid building. Make no, no sense, sense in, in the 19th century, century building. building. So we so are replacing all those, replicating the original 1880s pews that are in the building. So it's going to be this interesting, weird hybrid mix to go forward. So those are just a few. Of the, of the Utah, Utah projects, projects we're doing. doing. I know we're going to have some questions along the way. way. Um, how are we doing on time, time, time? Are we? We're at the hour mark. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I think so I have lots of so questions. questions. What are we what missing, are we missing about, about sort of meeting houses? houses. Yeah. 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 And it's so kind of like, that's a gilly. Please. Take all the time. So, 
a seer criteria for establishing an historical significance. Yeah. 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 So, um, I'll use liberty of all you can. Yeah. Yeah. I get it from a church perspective, liberty of all. Sure, they're not contributing yep. yep. to all. It's okay. 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 But then, then there's, there's also the requirement the that has to be demolished by the fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to. I knew, I knew this, this question, question was, was coming. coming. So, so yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're talking about the Wells, Wells Ward, Ward meeting, meeting house, house on 50 East, a 50 East, about 19 South. Uh, no, no, right, right, right. I'm talking about, about um, it's, it's Ward East. Oh, that's oh, the that's Liberty Wells Rec Center. So that's, so a, that's different a different building. building. Fourth, Fourth East and, and um, Seventh South. South. Oh, sure. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. You saw, you you saw, saw, you saw, right, right, the Red right Center, Center or the Meeting House. The Meeting House, yeah. The meeting the house. house. yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 I didn't walk away from it. That's not being scheduled for demolition. No, 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 no. So the Wells Ward, that's a really hard one. Um, that, um, that was, was because that, that is, is one of our designated, designated historic meeting houses. houses. Um, it's um, one, it's of one of my favorites. favorites. I, love I love that, that building. building. Um, the, the earthquake, earthquake was, very was very unkind, unkind to, that to that building. To the to tune, the tune uh, of to make, to make it structurally, structurally sound, sound enough, enough that, that it's no longer condemned, condemned is extremely, extremely expensive. expensive. Um, um, and so we've wrestled over that for a couple of years. What is what is the right thing to do? A building, a building that, that is, is that significant, but has, has that, that much, much damage. damage. Um, and, and we're, we're also dealing with, dealing with the issue of Salt Lake. I think like most religious organizations, organizations that, that church, church membership, membership is declining. Is declining. Right. right. So, so in, in that, that stake, stake, the downtown, the downtown, the downtown area, area, that stake, the Wells, the Wells stake, stake um, has 10, ten buildings, buildings, seven, seven units. units. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Um, um, of those, of those 10, ten buildings, buildings eight, eight are on, are my, on historic my historic list. list. Um, um, this is also this is the state that I attend, so I, I, I take this very personally. personally. So, so um, um, we, we were, were actually, actually when the earthquake, when the earthquake happened, happened, we were, we were punch listing, listing a project, project to, finish to finish that building. That building. We, had we had done some, some upgrades and done some, some, some fixes, fixes on it. On it. And, the and the day we went in to assess the earthquake, earthquake damage, damage is also, is also when, when we punch listed the, the project, which feels really weird. You're like, oh yeah, the carpet looks really good. Don't look at the giant foot white crack in the walls. And so that building is hit in this weird thing. It's an incredibly significant building. But it's, but no, it's longer no longer needed, needed by the church. By the church. So, so ideally, ideally right, we would, right, we would find, find another, another owner, owner to take it. it. No, we, no we, we would lease it long term, like we've like done, done with two other, other buildings, buildings, we would sell it. Um, um, but there was, there was concern, concern that because, that because the, building the building has had so much damage, finding an owner who could buy a repair the building and make whatever changes they needed to make it usable. There's, There's no, no way, way we, those, those, those numbers, numbers were not, were not lining, lining up. up. Was that something that was tried? Is that yeah, yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, yeah. You tried selling it as is. is and... No, so no, we, so we, we didn't try selling it as is. is. We, we, we talked talk to, to lots, lots of people inside, inside and outside, outside the church. The church of, you know, know, potential partners we worked with in other projects, architects, contractors, trying to find a viability of it. And so for us, the issue was if we sell this building as is, um, um, there is often track, track record of people, of people in about five years, years coming back and saying, oh, we're in way over our heads. heads. Can the can church, church give us X, X amount, amount to fix it? it. Or it sits it's empty, empty for another 10 or 15, 15 years, years and gets, and gets more, more and more lighted. And, lighted. and, so, and so I think, think that as terrible as it is, that demolition requirement is out of kind of that concern. That if the long, you know, if this building sits on the open market for 10 years, it's going to get a worse, worse and worse shape. shape. And, the and the building has, has been, been condemned. condemned. And so if so it comes, you know, so if someone is injured in the building, while we own it, the liabilities on that are enormous. enormous. So, so that's, that's, that's the tension we're in. How, how do you keep buildings up and usable while also acknowledging that some buildings financially don't make sense? So what I try to do for the mitigation on that building, we've done a full 3D 
um, scan, um, scan of that, that building. building. So we have so we really, have really great, great interior, interior, exterior, exterior photographs. We do a building, building walkthrough walk if we wanted to. to. Um, we've, done we've done some architectural salvage out of that building. building. And, we, and started we started as well, as well kind of oral, oral history documentation project with that with local, local community. community. So we've invited, so we've invited people, people in the community to come back, back share, their share their stories about, about the building, building. Um, um, donate, donate photos, photos kind of help us help keep it. it. So, so I know that's, I know that's never, never as good as saving, saving the building, building but, but in, in the reality that we're in, that seems like the least terrible of the bad options. For us. Does that help at all? Well, and I just use that building as one example. So some of these other buildings that do have the like the conditions for yes, scale yeah. on it. Yeah. yeah. Is it just from a similar process of thinking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What will happen to the building in post yeah. 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 So, yeah, the, so church, the church, um, all, and every, and every, every time, time you sell, sell a building, building, we try to, we do, we do have restricted covenants, covenants on it. On it. So, so we, um, we don't, we don't want, want our houses turned into bars, dispensaries that happen in places. Um, again, um, because, because it has, it has a, a, reputation a reputation of the community, community as, as a religious structure, structure. We, we, we want, want to, kind to kind of not, not kind of create some sensationalism by, by, oh, I, got, I, got, I get to I own a Mormon, Mormon building, building and, and, and do things, things that we don't feel would be appropriate with it. But, but if we can, can find, but ideally, ideally you find a community partner that's going to take really good care of the building. So, so um, I've been involved, involved in lease or sell agreements on a half dozen of buildings last few years, trying, years, trying to find just the right, the right owner. owner. So, right, so, so that the, it can remain part, part of that community, community um, and, and remain standing. standing. And, you know, because demolition, demolition is always, always you never you want to demolition, demolition, right? right? That's, That's always the, the last thing, thing you want to do. do. So, I don't know if that helps. Yeah, I just think that it is so, like, can you be done that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, I, I get I mad too. too. So, so I, 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 I get the bigger of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think and there's, I think there's a, a fair amount of, um, I think education, education that all kind of religious, kind of religious communities, communities could be doing to help us really understand the reality of some of the issues we're dealing with. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you do when communities shift? And when you know, how do you keep a community intact when? The world, the world seems to be shifting out underneath, underneath it. it. And, and, and I think, I think we're, we're all dealing with that. that. Yeah. 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 So, Dee, so I know you, know you have comments, comments about this, too. too. Well, well, just, I'm just going to say it's what you just said. It's just to be said. It's not just the LDS church. There's, there's so many programs that are um, from the LDS state, but one of the issues back where I saw the scene was laying wars. Harris. Yeah. yeah. Um, if the Catholic Church didn't want so much money to get aside, I thought they would let be go. Yeah. yeah. So they tried to fund a new high school mm -hmm. by demolishing Judge yeah. Renato yeah. and, and the yeah. Lord. So, and, yeah. um, and, and that's the key thing where I start. Yeah. 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 But I think and it's, again, where we need community, community and city and private organizations to step in. I know, you know the city is working with, you know, how do we change our zoning and how do we in ways that help these buildings remain standing? I think that's a really important part of it. You know, what do we do as a preservation community to keep these places going? You know, minimize the losses. And then when so when the losses do happen, we are really... We've, we've, we've exhausted, exhausted every other option, option before we have a loss. Shafi. Yeah. Um, I'm just so impressed by all the moments that are undergoing the uh, I state camp motivation, mm -hmm. which, like, for my mother and understanding, is very basic. Moss, like, Moss, us, can you talk us just a little bit through the, like, what's that in stills and, like, how long is it in, like, a damn thing? Yeah. 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 Um, um, yeah, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm not, not an engineer, engineer and I've been learning more about engineering in this job, job than I that ever, I ever thought, thought I would want. want to do. <laughs> I, 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 I am a historian. No, um, um, so, so seismic, seismic upgrades, upgrades are, are there's multiple, multiple ways, ways to approach, approach it, it, right? There, there is, is um, sometimes, sometimes you do an upgrade, upgrade for um, what you call like gravity, right? Just so the building doesn't fall over when you lean on it. And then, and then there's, there's what we call life safety. safety. That, that means, means the building is probably, probably not going to survive, survive, but it'll, it'll remain standing, standing long, long enough for people, people to get out, out safely. safely. 
And that's, and what, that's most what most of our, of our houses, houses are, are, are doing in Salt Lake. If you've got a seismic upgrade on your house, it's, it's you brace the chimney to make sure the walls don't collapse. Right, so you can get out of the house before it comes down. Um, so, um, the so the vast majority of our meeting houses, houses are that, are that kind of basic life safety. safety. A few, a few are called immediate occupancy, occupancy, and what that, and what that means, means is, is there's going to be some repairs, repairs and the plumbing's going to be a mess, mess but you can move, move back, back in, in the next, next week. week. So, so the Sully Temple, Temple and the City Capital and the City County Building are kind of that, you know, they need to be able to be usable relatively soon. It's called, it's called uh, immediate, immediate occupancy, occupancy seismic. seismic. So, so when you're doing the light safety, um, there's, lots there's lots of different ways. ways. Basically, Basically, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the walls and the roof and the, and the floor, floor all smooth, smooth together. together. So, so if, you if you can, can you just, just touch make sure the roof, roof and the walls are connected. Sometimes you just do a little piece of steel. So most of our meeting houses is that you have a roof upgrade and that covers 85% of what you need to do when you're, you're fine. fine. These historic meeting houses, houses, at least to go back to this, to this one. one. Um, I don't, I don't know, know if you can see all this rigging equipment, equipment up here. Up here. Basically, Basically, what they're, what they're doing, doing is they open up the roof, and they're running, running a, 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 about a six-inch six inch drill through the center of the wall. wall. And that and connects all the way down to the foundation. And then inside that six-inch hole, you put rebar, you fill it with grout. And then, and then at the top, at the top you, put you put a concrete, concrete beam, beam and you put, and you put the roof back, back on. Why you do, do that, that is because, is because you, don't you don't want to impact, impact the exterior or the interior. Or the interior. Um, um, so, so that, um, yeah, so, yeah, that, so, that, so, so we do that on a lot of our storage houses because, because there's, there's so many good historic, historic finishes, finishes in them that we don't want to impact. Is that also so like making us in one of these rooms of preservation historic fabric? Yeah, this third option. It varies. it varies. It really, it really it depends, it depends on the building. On the building. Okay. Um, um, and, so and so we, we like the center floor auction, auction on our historic meeting houses, houses because, because that upgrades, upgrades the entire, entire building, building, but it doesn't, it doesn't impact, impact finishes. finishes. And does that fit under the immediate occupancy? No, no that, that is, is life safety. safety. Yeah. 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 So base so isolation, isolation doesn't need occupancy. occupancy. Um, if, if, but like the Alpine Tabernacle, where we the interior finishes were not that, were fairly replaceable, replaceable anyway. anyway you know, it was, it was a, drywall a drywall wall with a tin ceiling. ceiling. We can take, take the, tin the tin off, fix it, it put it back. back. Um, we, um, ended we ended up just cutting, cutting holes in the walls, walls and filling, and filling it with concrete, concrete that, way. that way. So it really, so it really depends, depends on the building. On the building. That's, That's why you want a really good structural, structural engineer, engineer, but a, a, a structural engineer that is very well schooled in historic structures. Because any random engineer will come and say, oh, you know, do a concrete wall on the inside face and you're good to move on. You're like, that. That's, That's a bad, a bad idea. idea. So, so, so a lot so of the groups are finding a good structural engineer, finding an architect who understands, who understands historic, historic buildings. buildings. And they're coming, and they're coming up, with up with a solution, solution right, that gets you as far as you want to go. go. Because, because the, the, the higher, higher the occupancy, you know, the, you know, the, the quicker, quicker you can back, back in, in, the more the expensive, expensive the fix. fix. By like By orders of magnitude. So a little roof upgrade on your house might cut the steel beams. Right. This... Add a couple, couple zeros, several, several zeros. zeros. <laughs> um, <laughs> base, base isolation, isolation add a few more zeros, zeros to that. So, 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 so with, so with the Salt, Salt Lake Temple, Temple is the seismic, seismic restoration, restoration similar, similar where you're drilling, drilling in the, in the we're, we're, we're doing all of it. I just saw it. It's a base isolation system. system. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so that's where your giant, giant hockey puck is. Because the walls are how thick? Uh, uh, six, feet. six feet. Yeah. 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 But we're but also we're drilling. drilling. Down. Down. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, um, something, something like this, the Logan Tabernacle, you should be able to go 15 feet a day. Right, the Salt Lake Temple, Temple drilling, drilling because it's granite, granite is about a foot a, foot a day. day. Oh, my goodness. Well, and how many well, times do you actually really fall? Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, no, no, so, so, yeah, so, yeah, so, so you drill, drill the hole all the way down. down. Hopefully, Hopefully, no cadence happen on your way down. down. Way down. And then you grab it. And then it dries and you're done. But Salt Lake Temple, the only one that I'm halfway in the Salt Lake Temple, that's still going to take a long time. I mean, that's a very slow drill. Yeah. Are there a lot of... Void void right 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 um, so, so, I, so, I, so, so actually, actually well. well. There's, there's more voids in Logan. Logan. It's been it's very, very annoying. annoying. Um, um, gotten gotten into it. It. Hey, what hey, word I'm going to turn Yes. Yes. So I know that was in the top of the What can you tell us about the interior of the, of the Salt Lake Temple and what happened there? <laughs> um, 
As not, as not as a, what, handy. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm not, not allowed, allowed to talk, to talk about, about that. That, that is, is a different, different permission, permission that we have, we have to talk about today. today. Uh, um, so, so someday, someday we can talk, talk about, about, about a lot, lot but, but that, that's, that's a different, a different conversation. conversation. So, so, but, but so I don't so know how to do it. So, so sum up, there's a lot of projects going on. There's a lot of buildings we're trying to save. We do have some defeats. Some buildings get lost that I don't like losing. You know, when we lose some stories, I'd rather keep. But I think by and large, we are we're making progress. Right, and right. it's going to come, come like any preservation, preservation project is going to come incrementally. incrementally. And they feel, feel like, like a door, a door here, here or a window, window there, there or a paint color, color over here. here. But I think if we as a kind of a collective group, group you know, you know stick, stick with it, right? You're going to get some really incredible results out of it. It's just going to take some time to get there. So, and now then, let's talk about archaeology. I think you can see how lucky the church, the church is to have Emily. Emily. Yes. She's, She's amazing. amazing. We're, we're, we love, we love having, having her, her part of our team. Of our team. Um, she talked a lot about the above ground, ground stuff. stuff. We're going to talk about, about the below ground stuff, ground stuff that we do at uh, church or sites. sites. I tried, I tried to, to use most of the examples from Utah, even though most of our historic sites are not in Utah. So there are some from elsewhere. I hope you'll go with. with. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip, skip through, through most of this, of this but because it's more like history, history and philosophy. But, but just so you know, in, in, in our theology, theology there's, there's even a strong, a strong current, current of what, of what I, I call kind of ar archaeological um, um, understanding, understanding, right? right? If, you, if you know anything, anything about modern day theology, theology and Joseph Smith's role in retrieving objects from the earth. To bring, to bring forth, forth truth, truth out of the earth, earth. Uh, uh, even, even from the very beginning, beginning there, there is this archaeological, archaeological undercurrent, if you will, if you will. That, that I, th I think whether the latter day states are cognizant of it or not, not influences, influences why, I mean, the, I mean, the public in general, I think, is fascinated with archaeology because who doesn't like finding buried treasure, right? Because just how the public conceives of archaeology. It's even embedded in our history and archaeology also, which I think is latter day saints. Maybe, Maybe even, even just a, a, a slight more, more interest, interest in, in archaeological, archaeological things. things. But, but I, I think that's everything from the Sears stone, stone that Joseph Smith, Smith dug, dug up, up and then he and used to translate the Book of Mormon, Mormon, it's it's the Book of Mormon, Mormon itself, itself, right? right? Removing, Removing this from the earth, digging, digging it up like an archaeologist. There's even in the Book of Mormon itself, there's accounts of people finding ruins and objects, you know, ancient things. There's, of course, Joseph Smith's, Smith's work, work with, with the Pope. Abraham, Abraham actual, actual archaeological remnants, remnants scrolls, scrolls and mummies. mummies. When, when, when he was marching, marching to uh, Missouri to reclaim the lands that they had they lost, lost after being kicked out, out of the Jackson, Jackson County, Missouri, Missouri. they come they across come aerial mounds, which we know we know there are hope mounds, but they dig into them. There's revelations that he receives that talks about finding truth uh, under, under the, the earth, earth, things, things that, have that have been, been and even, even in the, in the in revelations, revelations, you know, direct construction, construction of these historic buildings, buildings, buildings that we care so, care much, so about. much about. You know, you know it's, it's talk, talk about, about bringing, bringing your, your antiquities, antiquities and people to have knowledge of antiquities, antiquities to help, to help construct, construct uh, something, something that for them for was them about, about the eternity. eternity. So this, so this connection, connection between, between past, past, present, and future, and, future, and when and this emphasis on past, too, all ties into, into by the same uh, fascination, fascination and appreciation for old, old things. things. In the ground, the ground, 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 ground uh, archaeology, archaeology, and architecture. So, so just, just, that's, that's just a short, short introduction. introduction. For those, For those of you that, that don't appreciate the different, different subfields of archaeology, this is, this is the one that we're talking, talking about today, historical, historical archaeology. There's different, there's different ways, ways of defining it. I define, define it as the archaeology of the modern world, world that's, that's my definition. Is the one I prefer. Really, we really talked about, about the last 500, 500 years, years of human history. history. I always, I always start, start with this kind of, kind of and this, and this may be too basic, basic for this group, but I think it's worth repeating. We all, we all know there was, was a thing called, called the past. past. We wish we, we could get, get into a time machine, machine and go back and, and observe it directly, directly but we can't. So what, so what do we do? We rely on 
Vestiges, vestiges of that, that past. Historians, historians rely primarily, primarily on the historical, historical record, record, the documents, the, documents, the, the newspapers, the photographs, etc. Et et uh, uh, archaeologists will throw, throw in, in other, other types, types of vestiges, vestiges right? right? Artifacts, the artifacts, the furnishings, the furnishings in, in, into trash, trash whatever, whatever, whatever it is, the archaeological, archaeological record. record. We also, we also in, in historical, historical archaeology, archaeology rely on oral history, history that, that adds, adds a little bit more to the picture. We even sometimes go observe living people that they think are living in a way similar to the way people have lived in the past to try to understand how to interpret or find the ground. Take all, take all of these, these and probably, and probably more, more uh, sources, uh, sources of information, of information you, still you still have to have a complete picture. picture. You still, you still have, have to reconstruct that. You still have to fill in the gaps with your own biases, biases your, own your own interpretations, your, your own perspectives. So, so anything, anything, right? right? And this is, this is archaeology 101. This is history, this is history 101, 101, right? This is why we have 200,000 books about Abraham Lincoln. Because even though you're dealing with the same data, people see it differently and fill in those gaps differently. They emphasize different things. But, uh, but so, so just, just, just remember, remember right, right, everything, everything is a reconstruction, reconstruction on some level. Quick, quick, quick primer, primer, I should probably, I should probably skip through all this stuff, stuff. but um, um, the field of this first part of the early 30s, 30s with, with some, some of these, these uh, new, new deal programs, programs like the Civilian Conservation Board, Works Progress Administration, they started putting people to work, work excavating some of these famous early American scientists of Jamestown, Virginia. 30 years, 30 years later, later during, during the Cold, Cold War, War and it had its professional beginnings. You get the first university course, course at that time. You get the get society, society for its first part of the first kind of professional, professional society. society. And, and, uh, and uh, also, also when, when the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints first started dabbling in historical archaeology, the first excavations of the Northern Temple in 1962. This is this the man, is the man that, they that they hired to do, to do that, that, some of that excavation. He's not, not a member of the, of the church. His name was Gene Carl Harrington. Harrington. He's been his career, been his career in the National Park Service. He was actually, he was actually involved in some of the early excavations in Jamestown. After, After he retired, they recruited him to come, come help, help with the archaeology program in Nauvoo. And the Society for his Archaeology was formed there in 1967. Later, they created a medal for Life Achievement Award. For, for archaeologists, archaeologists you know, done great work, work in the careers they named after, after him. him. That's the That's front, front of the metal. metal. On the back, On the back of the metal, metal they feature three, three of the sites that he excavated, including the John Temple. Temple. So, there's so there's this interesting, interesting connection, connection between, between the Church, Church of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ Latter-day Saints, and, and this major, major professional, professional society for historical archaeology, the International Society. So people, and it seems especially true in Utah, I don't know why, but... For, for one, one, there is, is uh, I got, I got my undergraduate degree at Brigham University. University. I studied with the, the professor, professor named Dale Birch, Birch, who was a bona fide historical archaeologist. archaeologist. When, he, when retired, he retired, they never, they never replaced, replaced him. him. And there and is not, not a single, single historical archaeologist in any institution, institution of higher education in Utah, Utah still today, today right? right? Some 20 some years later. There is such an emphasis on. The prehistoric, the prehistoric past, past in Utah, in Utah and, 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 and it just kind of boggles my mind. mind. Um, um, but I believe, I don't know if this is still true, but it was true maybe five years ago. Chris Merritt, our Shippo, and I, I, I think are still the only two people in the entire state of Utah, Utah that have PhDs, PhDs in historical archaeology. People, the, there's just not there's just not support for that as there is in other places. So you hear critiques like this from our colleagues, right? And we love our colleagues, we love prehistoric archaeology as much as this, but the feelings are always mutual. But we, like, oh, we, don't we don't need to excavate historic sites because, because the historians have already covered that. that. We don't, we don't, there's nothing, there's nothing new, new that archaeology can tell us about the past that historians, historians have not already told us. Or they'll, or they'll, they'll, they'll kind of make, make fun of the, of the material, material culture, culture as, as if, if oh, it's, oh, just, just tin, tin, it's all just trash. trash. It's grandma and grandma's trash. Why would we care about that? What is that? What can that possibly tell us about the past that we don't already know? My counter to that as well. What do those little tiny pieces of chip chip stone tell, tell you about, about that? <laughs> which, which I know they I know do, they do right? right? But, but it's the same logic, right? right? Whether, Whether it's a tin can, can or a piece of lithic divotage, uh, uh, they, they all can tell us something to use and know how to ask the right questions. Right. So, so here's, here's the real counter that I often use when I teach classes or whatnot. I call it four C's in historical archaeology, right? Sometimes, Sometimes it's, it's nothing, nothing more than, than just confirming what we already, what we already know, know, which is, which is valuable. valuable. It's, it's not the greatest, but it's valuable. valuable. So, so, oftentimes, oftentimes it completes, it completes what, we what we think we know about, about the past. past. 
Other times, Other times it will correct, 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 right? We think, think we know something, something and we're actually wrong, wrong and our and theology corrects, corrects what we think, what we, think, we, think we, know. we know. And then, and then it sometimes, sometimes confuses us, us as well. As well. And it's and in those, those confusions where we're actually can't 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 new knowledge and maybe completely correct our understanding later as we get new information. So, so let's start, let's start, I was going to start the presentation this point going down with some with examples, examples from, from Latter-day Latter Saints, Saints sites uh, that, uh, that talked talk about, about you know, each one of these. And and to be to fair, fair, it's not like, like every archaeological excavation is probably doing all four of these things simultaneously, depending on what we're looking at. It's not that these are individual separate things that only happen at one site and then another. So I'm just picking out examples to to illustrate, to illustrate these four points. points. Starting, Starting with, with the Nautilus Temple, okay, okay not, not Nautilus Temple, but we knew, we, we knew lots, lots of things, things about the Nautilus Temple, Temple before it was excavated in the 1960s, 1960s right? We, we have photographs, we have, photographs, we have drawings, we have, drawings, we have, we have records, records, architectural records, records uh, accounts, accounts, all sorts of things. things. Uh, but, but when they when put they that put first backhoe train in December 1961 and they uncovered the limestone footings of the basement walls, they confirmed, they confirmed that that building, that building actually, actually existed, existed. <laughs> and, it and it was right, right there, there right, 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 right where they found it, right where they thought, they thought it, they would find it. it. So on so the most, the most very basic, basic level, level uh, a confirmation of what, what we thought, we thought we knew. Knew. this is falling somewhere, they begin some excavations, some excavations and, throughout and throughout the 1960s, 1960s they, they continued to excavate it, and this is the archaeological floor plan that was drawn, was drawn in the final, final, the final, the final report, report, right? right? So, so a, lot a lot of information, of information that, that confirmed at the very basic, basic level, level that there was, was a Nauvoo temple, 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 and it was here, here and it was made out of limestone, like, like the record, record said, said, it did it have stairwells in front, and, and all, all these things, things that, we, that, we that we knew from other sources that were confirmed. Another example of that is the Provo Tavern, the original Provo Tavern. This is the second one, when it got destroyed by fire. But, but you go back you go to these old photographs, photographs and there was an, was an earlier, earlier tavern on that block, block in the center of Provo. Of Provo. And, and we have we photographs of it, we have architectural drawings of it, it. Uh, the sandborn fire insurance map that shows location. So there's a lot of information, of information we already knew, knew but, but it didn't, it didn't nothing, nothing survived of it above ground. So you bring in the ground and train to rain and this is. Professor, Professor John, John McBride from, from Brigham Young University, University of the Department of Geological Sciences. Sciences. We've done a lot, a lot of work with him with him using gram and radar. radar. I think I you know think how radar works. works sends, sends down light waves, waves radar waves, waves, and those, those as they reflect, they, they, they count, count the things and reflect back, back to the antenna, antenna which, which creates, creates a display on the computer screen, which is not it's not like the movies, right? You see like the perfectly articulated velociraptor skeleton there. Just these little, little blips, blips. <laughs> which, which but then you, you can put into a 3D volume and slice and, 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 and dice in such, such way, but you're looking, you're looking for, for patterns, patterns, right? right? Um, so um, we so did that, that at, at, in the in area, area where, where the historical, historical records suggest that this earlier building, earlier building stood, stood, right? right? And, 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 and so we can look at correspondences here between sandborn photographs. We knew that there was a cupola. We knew that there was some wooden steps up the front. We knew that we knew there, there were these basement, basement entrance, entrance wings, wings and then the brown, brown represents uh, uh, adobe, adobe, right? right? And, and the blue, blue is wood, wood or, or stone, stone, and the yellow, yellow is wood, right? So we knew the different materials, we knew the kind of shape, we knew the general location, and so you bring in the radar, we had to do it in three different grids because, well, because the historical records are in the site, right? We thought that we could get all the fist grid and then get them in the bottom half of it. And then, and then there was a big tree in the middle, so we went around, around it. Um, um, but, nonetheless, but nonetheless, see that, see that really good? Good? When, you, when you when you when take, you take the, results the results of the radar, right, it's, not, it's, not, it's not great. great. If, you if, if you didn't know what you're looking at, you're a psychologist, you're a psychologist you say, well, what do you see there? Someone you might say, I see my mother-in-law. In that, that's my one joke for the day, sorry. You impose that on the, you know, you do some overlays and you see, wow, the thing is there, right? At least the radar is showing that there's something in the same shape as inside as the sandborn map shows, more or less. And then, so we decided to, again, confirm that by digging this small test at the southeast corner. And it's that, right? Four and a half foot sandstone walls, basement walls. All, all there, there. And, that and that led to, to a 
full blown um, excavation. excavation. Because, because this, this area, area was, was going to be impacted, impacted as, as the church, church converted, converted the tabernacle, tabernacle into, into an operating temple, temple, right? right? It's much, much too small, small of a building, building for what, 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 what uh, is done inside temples. temples. And so, so dressing rooms room and other things, things had to be placed, placed underground, underground in this area. area. So, so this, this is a, really a salvage, salvage project, project, right? right? But, but again, again, instead of just digging it up and throwing it away, the church sponsored a full-blown excavation so this could be understood, documented, preserved at least in digital and other records before the the southern third was had to be removed for for construction. But, but here's, here's the full thing. We hired, hired actually to hired hired BYU, BYU to do to this. this. A great, great project, project for that, for that, for that, for that university. And, and uh, the, whole the whole thing was there, was there including, including the rear, the rear, the rear vestry, vestry, the base of the stairs, stairs um, the, pillar the pillar supports, supports that, that held up the first floor. floor. Uh, uh, it was all all there. It was amazing. So 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 confirmed, right? Now, now, now it, it actually is there. there. We, know we know that it was built out of what we thought it was. It's shape, it's, shape, it's size, size, it's location, location and everything. Yes. Yes. When did that happen? That was, that was in, in right after I started. started. 2011, yeah. The winter, the winter of, right, right after, after the fire was in December 2010. And so it was that winter going into the spring of 2011. Great, Great uh, uh, public art gallery project. project. We put, we had, had a bunch of change fence up, so we put some for sign on change fence, fence and had, had students out there interpreting it to the public as the excavation was going on. So, so it's not just confirming like architectural remains. Historical archaeology can also confirm activities and behaviors of the past. This is the best copy of the newspaper article that I could find. But you'll notice what it says. It says, wait, don't eat. The Sixth Ward is going to serve their famous chicken dinners each day next week from 12 to 2.30, beginning promptly at 12 noon Tuesday. The basement of the old Provo Meeting House is where the tables will be set. All you can eat for 25 cents. Sounds pretty good. Better than Chuck Brown. And sure enough, right, in that excavation of the Provo Tavern, we find, we find evidence, evidence artifacts that, that support, support right, and confirm, confirm, confirm some of these behaviors, behaviors that, that we know from other sources happening, happening in the, in the, in the meeting house. house. You've got, you got some of the plates, plates that, that very well could have been used to serve those chicken dinners, chicken, 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 chicken bones, bones plenty of chicken, chicken bones in the excavation, excavation even, even some of the coins that might have been used to buy the 25 cents like you can So lots of correspondence, lots of confirmation, if you will. Um, other, other things, things that we know, right? right? We, we, knew, we know the know basement, basement the building was a uh, location, location for education. education. Children's, Children's school was held down there. there. Uh, uh, there were also uh, meetings of the women, women and the congregation that have coping down, down there. there. It's also, it's also used, used for temporary storage for woolen mills at times. But all of these things, and these are all small things that would have fallen through the cracks of the wooden floorboards. Uh, uh, that, 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 were that were found in the very, very bottom, bottom layers of archaeological, archaeological excavations. excavations. Little, little, little tiny things, things that would have been lost, lost right? right? And, uh, and, uh, and, and now, now they're, they're found, found and, and they, tell, they help they confirm, confirm some, some of these stories and some, some of these events that we know that happened, happened in the building. building. So, so, if that's, if that's all archaeology was good for, for then maybe some, some of those critiques, critiques would be valid, valid right? right? Okay, okay it really is just a hand into history, history right? right? You're just You're providing, providing interesting footnotes to things that we already know. That's, that's not, not all, all that, right? right? You really, really can't can actually, actually complete our understanding, understanding of what we know. We know. Add, add new, new information. Information, new information that would never have been known otherwise except through, through archaeology. archaeology. And here's some examples of that. I'll return to the Nautum Temple. temple. Um, um, this is that, that, that floor plan, plan with all the that was discovered, discovered archaeologically, and what, and what we, we what we know, know what we knew what we from, from uh, historical records is that there was a baptismal font in that building. Nobody, Nobody knew, knew where, where it was, was in that, in that basement, basement, nor how it was constructed precisely, and, and nobody, nobody knew how it was filled or drained. drained. Archaeologically, they found the location of where it was. was. They found the well right, right next to it that was used to fill it up, and they found a stone drain of how they drained it outside. Right? Right? Okay. So, so, not a huge revelation, but that is new information that would have never been known about this building in any other way. And so, I think it's significant. And another, so there's the well. This is actually. Jason Harrington's wife, wife, Virginia, Virginia who, who her, her medal should be named, named after her. her point point she, was she, the, uh, she was the one that did most of the excavations on the Temple. temple. Mm -hmm. 
next, next to that, to that well, well, they found, they found uh, a, patch a patch of the original brick floor of the basement, basement, basement set in the Harry Boom pattern. pattern. And, here and here you can, can see, see some, some of that. There's the well. well. And, and uh, uh, again, again information, information a detail, detail that, that was not known in the other way. Yes. What happened to this tool? I'll, I'll show, show you. you. It was it destroyed, destroyed by fire, fire and then tornado in the 1840s. Yeah. 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 And so, um, um, and then, and then it, was it was reconstructed in 2012. 2002, 2002, excuse me. The church, the church decided, decided to reconstruct it and, and using, using architectural, architectural records, records, historical accounts, but also the archaeological, archaeological records, records. And including, I mean, there's carpet in the basement now, but. Even, Even here, here on the, on the new, new brick, brick floor, floor, it's laid in that same Harry Boom pattern, pattern they, found. they found. They didn't, they didn't put, put a well in well that basement. And there's and a modern, modern plumbing, plumbing that's not still not green, green anymore. But nonetheless, nonetheless right, 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 especially, especially in the exterior, exterior, the interior, the interior building has changed, changed quite, quite a bit. bit. They've they incorporated they details as they could. But the exterior and the size and shape of it is really based on what we, we, what we, we learn archaeologically and elsewhere, elsewhere from, the, from, the, from the historical, historical record. record. Other, other, other things, things that we, so that so in, in the history, history after, after it was burned by fire, fire before, before it was knocked down by a tornado, tornado another, another group, group called, called the French Icarians, another, another communal, communal group, group that came from uh, France, France and went from the south of the Mississippi River, River. They, purchased they purchased the burned, burned down shell of the, of the building and they intended to renovate it, rebuild it for their own purposes. We know that from the historical record, but we never knew how they were trying to do that. And archaeologically, we found these stone piers that were going right down the center of the building, and we knew that these were, or the archaeologists knew that these were later additions because some of these were built out of other pieces of the building, you know, like remnants of the sunstone that was on the exterior. They'd take pieces and try to build these piers to support a new main floor on the building, right? And so this is evidence of the remodeling phase before the poor thing was knocked down um, by a tornado. By a tornado. And, and there's accounts of the workers were running from their lives and they were actually very lucky to escape. escape. Um, um, because this, this is all that was left, left after, after the, tornado the tornado got, got to, it. to it. And once, and once this, this happened, happened over, over people started salvaging the stone, you can find on the temple stone all over and over today in the buildings. And then ultimately they just knocked it down and covered it over. Which is what their archaeologists found, you know, a hundred years later. But here's the stone piers. So again, so again minor, minor details, details perhaps, perhaps, but, but information, information that completes our understanding of the history of this building. building. Things, things that we would have never known, known otherwise, otherwise without, without doing the excavation. excavation. Other, Other examples, examples of completion of, completion of, our, of our understanding, understanding of the Provo Tabernacle, back, 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 back to that. that. You can, you can read, read in the dedicatory, dedicatory prayer, prayer of this building, building dedicated, dedicated by John Taylor. Taylor. He, he, he blesses, blesses everything, everything from the top, top of the building, building to the basement, basement to the walls. walls. He, blesses he blesses the plaster. The plaster. So we knew so the building was plastered, plastered on the interior, the interior right? right? But, we, but had we had no idea, idea how brightly how colored and beautiful that building is. Because there's no surviving photographs of the interior, right? But in the excavation, we found not just large sections of plaster, but also the moldings, the profiles, but also some of the the colors. colors. This would have so been, been a very, very bright, bright and beautiful, beautiful and lavishly decorated, decorated uh, meeting house, house that, that again, again, this, this we would we never, never have known had we not took to the archaeology. archaeology. Here's a more robust example. example uh, perhaps. Perhaps. This, this is from, is from my personal research, research before, before I started, started working for the church. I was a professor of archaeology, archaeology in the State University of New York system. And, and I bring students, students out here to the, the school valley, valley of Utah, Utah to excavate the site of Yosef Seppa. And, and uh, again, again, we know a lot about Yosef Seppa without doing the archaeology. There's plaque maps, there's, there's photographs, photographs of the residents. Of the residents. This, is, uh, this was this a colony, colony of Pacific, of Pacific Islanders. Islanders, people, people that, had that had converted to the to church, church in the Pacific, Pacific Islands. Islands. Migrate, migrate to, to Utah, Utah as, as was the custom at that, that time. They would come to Utah, Utah and, and uh, they, 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 they form a settlement in, in the Skull Valley and they make a settlement, which is the Hawaiian one for Joseph. Joseph. After, After Joseph, Joseph F. Smith, who was, was one of the early missionaries in the Hawaiian Islands and became a champion of the, the, the Pacific Island, Island people. people. So we know so a lot. There's photographs of buildings. There's newspaper accounts about events that were out there during the 28 years or so it was in existence. 
There's a, There's cemetery, a cemetery there still today, today with information, with information uh, not just geological, but you know, ar architectural and aesthetically. aesthetically. There's, There's census records. records. Deeds, deeds survive, survive. This, this is a table, table of the deeds, deeds that they're in, in. Church, 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 a handful, handful of them, but gives us gives information, information where, where people were living, living, what kind what of structures, structures they were living, living in. in. You plot those, those on the map, map and, and you can see, see kind of, of start, start to see patterns of where people were residing. Were residing. And, and uh, uh, we, we decided, decided to start, to start our, excavations our excavations on this particular lot that was owned by this particular family, partly because I met descendants of this family. And so, and so they, they gave, gave us permission, permission to, to excavate their ancestors' property, property even, even though they don't they own it today. today. It's, it's owned by a, a, a large ranching ranch operation who gave us their permission. Their permission. That's, That's the, the only picture that I know of John LaHoy. He came back to the Royal Indian in the White Lines. He's son of his 13 children with his wife and second wife, Emily. And again, and again we've, uh, uh, that's, that's John McBride again. We use ground, ground penetrator radar, radar to uh, scan, scan or survey their, their, their lock, lock 10, lock 10, lock 10. Again, again, nothing, nothing super uh, substantial here. Really, really, really jumps out. out. This, this is this is the one we're most interested in. This is dark anomaly, the bright reflection. So we laid out a series of excavation units, start exploring some of these things, and this is one of them. And, and when, when we started, started to notice this, we started excavating the ground. We encountered a, a, a layer of uh, uh, coarse stones, stones always, always right about 10, 10 centimeters, centimeters below, below the surface, surface except at this one corner. corner. We haven't we we removed have anything from there, it just didn't exist. exist. And, the and the further, further down, down we went, and that is actually corresponds with that bright reflection where the radar was. The further down we went, the more artifacts started coming up. You can start to see. Bottles, bottles showing, showing up. up. You, you start, start to see, to see uh, uh, ceramics, ceramics chimney, chimney lamps, lamps, various, various condiment, condiment bottles, bottles and vessels. And ultimately, and ultimately that thing went, went down, down close to six, six feet. feet. And, and what, what we determined is this was their privy shaft. shaft. Right, this right, was their toilet. toilet. And, and, and this was all of their artifacts. It was only excavated half of it, which was kind of common practice. So the other half still exists out there under for some future archaeologists to test, test their hypotheses. Um, um, full of interesting things, things right? This, this is one, one that, that uh, I thought was really, really uh, special. As, as we pulled pull it out of the ground, it looked like, like dozens, dozens of other, other non-descript clear bottles, bottles that we were pulling out of that privy. It includes like this one as we have to even got cleaned up. It had it some embossed lettering on the heel that said patented in June 1894. So we go, so we go on, on to, to Google, Google Patents, Patents and, and type, type in, you know, you know clear, clear glass, glass bottle, bottle in June 1984, and, and this comes, comes up, up, and it's and a baby, baby bottle, it's an early nursing bottle, bottle that was patented, patented by a guy in New York, York and, and, uh, and, and so, so to take this little, little fragment, fragment and, and show it to the descendants of the Hoy family, who's, this was a fancy one of their mothers or fathers, but that's how close the past is in this case, right? And they obviously got very emotional, and this connection between the past and the present gets very, very tangible when things like this happen. So, special connection, but this is, again, completing our understanding and our awareness of the past through archaeology. Really quickly, the ceramics that came out of here Almost all, all were, once you piece them together, together, they were complete vessels, vessels, right? So, so this, this wasn't, wasn't like they're like destroying, destroying things, things that were that broken. Were broken. Uh, uh, these are, they're, they're throwing, throwing away entire dishes. dishes. Uh, and, 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 and as we, as we looked, looked at this closely, closely we looked at the, the date, date of manufacture, manufacture different, different patterns, patterns and the and assemblage. assemblage. We determined that it's very likely that what happened is that they, when they left in 1917, the president of the church at that time, uh, was uh, Joseph, Joseph Smith, 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 this was named after him. He, I think, I think he, he saw the writing on the wall, wall that uh, not, not only was church, church demographics changing, changing, but the, uh, the uh, future of the Latter-day Saint Pacific, Pacific Islanders, Islanders was changing. Was changing. Was like, go, go back, back to, to the islands, islands and help build, build the Laie Temple, the first temple to be built outside of the continental United States. So basically, so basically shuts the settlement down, down. They, go they go back, back to the islands, islands and, and many of the descendants are still there today. But, but whatever they could not bring with them, them which is probably most of their possessions, went down, went down the, the hole, hole, right? right? And, and uh, just down the privy. So, so you have this time capsule, if you will, of a lot of the things that the Mahoney family used. 
And as, and we, as looked we looked at this, this uh, there's, there's a very distinct pattern that all of what our gel is called these T-wares or whatever. Or whatever. Uh, and, uh, and these would be what we call table wares. Table wares. All, all of the table wares were plain white. white. All the T-wares were some kind of floral detail. They were always exactly the same, similar enough. And, and, and if, if you were, you were and, and I made this mistake as a young archaeologist, if you were, if you were interpreting this as a European, European or site on the Eastern Seaboard, you would, you would say, well, well this, this is a classic, classic example of what historians and archaeologists have demonstrated of conspicuous consumption. Right, that, that Europeans, Europeans like, like to show off, would bring out their nice stuff for their guests to show off how wealthy they were to their guests, right? So that's how important I am. I'm going to show off, right? I wrote, I wrote it up, it up that, that way, way and, and I sent it, it to some of the descendants, the descendants of the Holy family. family. And they were and very, very generous, generous in their, their um, in, in their responses. Yeah, most, most of them said, oh, yeah, yeah Ben, I guess I can see that. that. That's interesting. interesting. I remember Grandma had a, a display cabinet in her house where she put some nice things on display. But thankfully, there was one that was really honest. He's a lawyer. He still lives out there in the wine lines. But he came back and said, that's old. He's like, that's crap. He's like, that. That, that, does not, that, is that is not how our people, people work. work. That's, that's not, not our culture. culture. And I was like, I was like oh, oh, shoot. shoot. <laughs> I'm going to go, go read some ethnographies about Hawaiian culture, culture which, is which is what I did. I did. Went back, back to books. books. It's very good. Educate, educate myself, myself more. more. And, and uh, this, this is just one, one, one great quote that helped open my eyes to what I think is really going on here. This is an anthropologist that studied Native Hawaiians on Oahu in the 1960s. One of his informants said, we are like crabs in a basket. As soon as one begins to crawl out, the others reach up to pull him back. Right? So there's very strong forces in Hawaiian culture for egalitarianism. Keep people on the same plane. Now, they do have their, their royal class and their commoner class. So there's some hierarchy on that level. But in the, in the commoners, you do not self-elevate. Right? If you do, you will be, there are cultural forces where they bring you back down so that you are all the same. So when you so apply, apply that logic, logic to this pattern that we saw, saw and, I, and I, I wrote the analysis, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's been published, published since, but uh, it's, it's not conspicuous consumption. It is on the contrary. It is them strengthening, strengthening these strong egalitarian ties by bringing out their very best for their guests, not to show up, but to show how much they value the relationship with that. That, that person, person that's coming, coming right? right? A subtle, a subtle but, but very important, important cultural, cultural difference between Euro-Americans Euro and Native Hawaiians. Uh, uh, so this so is a way to strengthen the ties of what, what you learn of in, in Moana, Moana in the Disney, Disney film, film uh, the, the Ohana, Ohana, right? The, the, the family, family ties. ties. Everyone's an auntie and uncle, uncle in, in Pacific Island culture, Island culture and they, and they, they, they part of the way that they strengthen them is by using their material culture uh, in, in that way, right? So, right? so there's, there's nothing Hawaiian about this, but the way, but the way they, they were using, using it was all about Hawaiian culture. culture. So, so that's, that's a great example of how we can complete our understanding about past life ways, past peoples, past places, past cultures through archaeology. None of that was learned, was learned from, from just, just historical, historical records. records. It had, it had to, be to be an analysis, analysis of the artifacts, artifacts and everything else, else that went into, into that. that. Correct. Correct. How are we doing on time? time? Here, we're, so we're going to be, be just fine. I didn't have time. I didn't come up with an example, example from, Utah, from Utah, but, but I do have one from the Peter and Mary Whitworth Farm in Fayette, New York, where the church was organized in 1830. For years, um, People, People have been going, going to this, to this site, site asked, trying, trying to find, to find out where, where was, was the cabin, cabin where, Joseph where Joseph Smith organized, organized the church on April 16th, 1830. And, and there's been various, various people that think that they have found it. Talking, talking to people, people looking, looking at records, going to the site, site even, even doing archaeology, right? right? Um, in 1969, this is my former professor at BYU, Dale Burge. I think he's still living in Pro Provo. Um, he was he hired by a couple, by a couple of BYU historians, historians who had already made up their minds, minds of, where of where this cabin, cabin was through his historical research, research and oral history, history to come, come confirm. confirm. That's, That's all they all wanted, wanted him to do. Come excavate here, here and, and tell us that we've got, got it right. right. Show, Show us the evidence, evidence right? right? And so he and did. He went out there and he excavated. The site has since been reconstructed in the area where he excavated. And he found, he did find the site. He found a concentration of artifacts. Uh, stone, uh, stone uh, uh, yeah, tile, tile, clay tile, tile coal, coal other things, things in, in a very, very concentrated, concentrated area. area. Problem, Problem is, is that when, when you, you look, look at the artifacts, artifacts which, which are in the, in the church, church archives, archives today, today 
with, with almost, almost just, just, just a, a few, few exceptions, exceptions these artifacts all date to the late 19th century, century not, not the 1820s and 30s, and 30s which, is which is when the church was ordered, ordered right? Right? when, when the were living there. there. Um, um, and you, and you, if can, you read his report, you can see that he's trying so hard to be diplomatic and like make the evidence fit the historian's foregone conclusions, right? Without telling them that they're wrong. And so, and so he's, he's trying, trying, right? right? And, 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 and yet, he, for, for whatever, whatever reason, reason, he didn't have the courage, courage to tell them, them that they were wrong. wrong. Okay, okay this, this was not the site. Um, so, so, as we were thinking, thinking about the 200th anniversary, anniversary of this event, event in the church, in the church right? right? coming up, we decided we wanted to start thinking about, well, what about this site? What can be done to make it more accurate, more more correct, if you will, right? right? So we started, so we started doing, doing the research, research looking, looking in the archives, and we came across, came across a small collection of artifacts, artifacts that were found in 2002. And, and they had this note, note. There's some missionaries, missionaries that were just, just walking along these fields one morning, morning after, after the farmer had recently plowed them. them. And, and find, find, they find this collection of artifacts, they call headquarters in Salt Lake City, and the guy who's done it, and then we talked about it, said, well, send them in. And, and he must have looked at them and said, well, yeah, these, yeah, are, these are these early 19th century artifacts, artifacks and just stored them in the archives. And, 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 and there they are, are but, but for us to find, find you know, 20, 20 years, years later, later. But, but uh, these, 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 these were, were artifacts, artifacts from the right period, right? right? Whereas, Whereas the ones, the ones that were found here were way too late. These ones were from the early 19th century. Where else on the 100-acre Whitmer farm? Are there, are there early 19th century, century artifacts, artifacts right? right? Because, because maybe, maybe we can we find a place, place where the Whitworths actually, actually lived. lived. So we so hired a archaeological firm out of Albany to, to, to do a pedestrian survey. After, after all, all this land was plowed, plowed we worked we work far at a time and survey. And, and sure, sure enough, the only place on the original 100-acre farm where any early 19th century artifacts were found was right there. Where those, where those missionaries, missionaries found, found them in the 20 20 years earlier. So that's, so that's and what's interesting, interesting about, about that location, location and knowing, and knowing the, the Whitmer family, family and their Germans, Germans right? They're Anabaptist Germans. Germans. And, and what's that? Is that? Yes, yes, it's actually right. right. It's exactly right. right. It's right. right. It's right. smack in the middle, middle and it's and set it's back, back from, from the road, road which is which a German, German building, building pattern, pattern right? right? So, so it actually, it actually fits, fits the cultural, cultural traditions, traditions of a German, German, a German, German family, family, right? right? So, so all these, these things, things are starting to come together. together like, oh, wow. Maybe, maybe uh, uh, well, we knew these guys were wrong, but maybe this is the place to borrow our friends and bring them up. Um, um, I have a question, if you don't yes. Yes. So, were, so you were you saying, saying that, that those missionaries sent, sent those artifacts, artifacts to Don Anders in 2002, 2002 and, and you guys just... just well, he looked well, he at them, what, what was he going to do, right? The site had just been, been constructed 20 years earlier. So, did you look back at those artifacts just recently? Yes, that's what happened. Yeah, so about five years ago, we were thinking about 2030 is coming up, and so we start... Doing, doing the background, the background research, research, right? right? We're reading 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 reports, reports, we're reading 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 reports, we so, so again, again, we've done, done uh, lots, lots of excavations, of excavations including raw area, area excavations, looking, looking for features, features of any kind, foundation, foundation post, post molds, pets poles, anything, anything that we can find out. Honestly, it's weird. weird. The, architectural the architectural evidence is, is scant here. Right? Right? We, we did not find the foundation. foundation. We have we found, found a couple, couple of, we're still, we're still waiting, waiting to find the final report. It's supposed to be done this month, month. but um, um, a couple, couple of features, a couple of post molds, but no foundation, sadly. But, but clear, clear, clear pattern, clear pattern of artifacts, of artifacts, right? right? We, we have the best artifacts, artifacts that, that, uh, we have some white ones, some red ones, red ones which is very common in the German tradition. And there's more, you can see way more red wares than white wares at this site. There's also, There's also some, some architectural, architectural remains, remains, some brick, brick fragments, fragments um, mostly, mostly bricks, bricks, very, very few nails, nails surprisingly, surprisingly, but not, but not, not so surprisingly, I think that long structure. Can I think we're on top of the port, port, it's about, it's about to go up. What's that? Oh, thank you. <laughs> that would be <laughs> catastrophic. <laughs> Ice, Ice instant clock, clock here. here.
I can't do. Uh, this, uh, this is, is uh, so, let me, so let me, before, before we go too much further, further, this is all preliminary, preliminary right? This, this, is, this, is, this is an early, early draft, draft of an interim, interim report. report. They've, they've previewed, previewed, they've, they've, I think, I think they've they've changed some of their interpretation analysis, 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 anal
So we so call, we call up, uh, our, our friends who hired our Wendy Simmons Johnson, 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 Johnson and that was, was then Commonwealth. Commonwealth. I don't know what their name is, but we also got Chris Merritt out there and did dirty with us. And then, and then a couple, couple of days, days we excavated the thing, took it took down, down lay, 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 and then ended up bisecting it so we could get a profile. profile. And, and uh, interestingly enough, enough, it was, it was full, full of artifacts, artifacts from, from the 1960s. 1960s. Even, Even though the bricks, bricks right? Bricks like this, this uh, were started to be made in the 1880s, 1880s right? right? Machine, machine, machine made, made bricks, bricks, fire bricks. But what appears is that... This thing, this thing was, was covered, covered up, up probably, probably in the late, in the late 19th century, century at the close of the construction, construction of the temple. temple. And then, and then it, was it was reopened, reopened and either during, during the, 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 the temple, temple was renovated in the 1930s, 1930s and it was again in the 1960s. We think in the 1960s it must have uncovered it again and thrown all the trash on it. It was found in the 1960s, and all sorts of stuff from the 1960s. And some of it we can actually match which parts are building because we have such good records from the 1960s remodel. Uh, but, uh, but at the at very, the very, very base, base was a was very, very dense, dense, greasy ash deposit, ash deposit that, that was full of toxic, toxic metals. <laughs> <laughs> the portal uh, to the underworld. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, and, so, and, 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 and the whole thing was just charred on the inside. On the inside. So, so, this, this, the, we, we, we still think that this must have been a boiler, right? We have these diagrams of these steam boilers, right? In the firebox that would heat the pipes and generate the steam to lift the power of hoists, right? The cranes. That they, that they were using, using to lift the, 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 the blocks up on the top of the temple walls. So, so again, it's, it's not a great, great example of confusing that I don't want to go time for, but that. Because this, this one, they think we know what it is, but we can't prove it because all we have is circumstantial evidence. But this is the one that I would tell you about, but I'll just breeze through real fast. Far West, Missouri, North Missouri, laid out flat sites in the 1930s, including an aerial ground. That, uh, that, uh, that we that think, we think was, right was right there based on historical, historical records and other things. things. Uh, uh, people historians have written about this stuff. stuff. They think they, 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 they know that's, that's what it was. was. Others, Others talked, talked about, about passing the cemetery, cemetery on the way to school. school. The picture, picture of the school used to sit there. After Smash showed, showed the school and showed this strange unmarked thing behind it, which was like, okay, that must be the cemetery. That must be the fairgrounds. This is the unique parcel. Um, we got we all got these other, other, these other accounts, accounts of later, later farmers, farmers ripping, ripping out the headstones to, to expand their farmland, farmland right, destroying the cemetery of the plowing over it. it. We got a yeah, court, court case, case of the guy of John Bolton being sued by the state of, state of state Missouri for, for using, using the old graveyard. Sat in here and said, Book H is nowhere to be found. If someone knows what Book H of the Caldwell County Circuit Court is, I will love you forever. That is where we will find the truth about where this barrel ground was. It's missing. So we go in there and we use every archaeological tool that I know of to, well, at the time. I thought you go back and probably should have used the light art. We used specially trained cadaver dogs, historic human protection dogs. You can see all the there are GPS, uh, GPS waypaths, and, and you can see, see that they, they five dogs, dogs independently one another, one another all uh, in, in, ended up in, in, uh, kidding or, or sitting down and alerting, alerting in this, in this northwest, northwest uh, northeast uh, quadrant, quadrant of the property. property. We used the radar, found the school. Found the school. This is this all is noise, noise. And, and you think, you think oh, all this is all perfect, perfect and you'll graze, this is all, this is all this noise, noise, and you actually don't, don't know why the machine, machine was, uh, was uh, not, not working, working so well, so well right, right here, here when it worked, worked perfectly, perfectly well, well. It should, it should. It's a sidewalk, this is a school, school, it's all it's there. there. We use magnetometry, same thing, found the evidence of the school, these are the dog alerts. You know, you know, little things, things here and there that have a metallic signature, but, but no evidence of, you know, you'd, 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 you'd expect, expect a, a nice, nice evenly pattern for like coffin, coffin hardware or coffin, or coffin nails or things, things like that. that. And, and it's, it's not here. here. Magnetic accessibility, again, school shows up really nicely. nicely. It's all it's there, there, but it's very, that's an archaeological site. That, you go there, it's all grass today. But again, nothing here, these are just little anomalies, not what we would expect for a cemetery. And so and finally, so finally like they were like saying, after this we dug some more torch trenches. We dug a test bit, we, we trenched diagonally across where all these dog alerts were, thinking, okay, 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 if there's even just a grave shaft, something, right? Some kind of indication 
and, and uh, nothing, uh, just, just pure, pure raw, raw clay, clay, essentially, all the, all the way down. down. We found this really interesting stone. That was it. That was the only thing. thing. And so, and so just, just Baffling, baffling, so, so confusing, confusing, right? Because, because there's, there's the evidence, evidence points there, there, the dogs, dogs pointed there, there, the other, the other instruments, instruments were working, working but didn't detect graves, and so um, I don't I know what to make of that, right? I'm confused. confused. And, and when one archaeologist is confused, it puts his trial away or her trial away and just waits for more evidence or new tools, new technologies that we can use to try to understand what remains a mystery for now. In closing, I remember, I remember as an undergraduate student that they were coming, coming across this article in this really old, obscure, obscure publication, publication, right? right? This goes back to what we started talking about, talking about how it's insane to me that there is not an institution of higher education in the state of Utah, Utah that is, has, has a program in historical archaeology. archaeology. Because, because you look, you look at, at, I mean, this, I mean, this is, is just, this is an article called Defunct Settlements in the Mormon Corridor or something like that. And there are just dozens and dozens and dozens. This is just like... Or more settlements, settlements, right? right? But, but everywhere, everywhere across, across Utah, Utah, you have historical archaeology, archaeology just, just waiting, waiting to be discovered. And, and you, would you would think, think you would think. think. There's, There's also, also great prehistoric archaeology, archaeology to be discovered. discovered, discovered that, but you think, think that one of these institutions of higher education would wake up and say, we have a whole slew of exploration and understanding just waiting to be discovered here. And, and, uh, and, 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 and a student, student body, if you will, will that is naturally interested, interested in their, in their historic, historic past, past and take and advantage of it. So maybe, maybe someday, someday that would be that the case. It was the case when I was a student, but it hasn't been for the last 20 or so years. But anyhow, that's the end. Any questions? Yes. Does the healthiest church have any current excavation projects? We, we uh, let me think, think. We, we, we've been doing radar recently, recently in Nauvoo, Nauvoo try to do some clearance for, for a visitor, visitor center, center that's been built, built there. there. We've just, we've just finished, finished up doing some work, work at the in Kirkland, Ohio, Ohio where Joseph and Emma Smith's, Smith's house is being restored. restored. That's almost, that's almost the archaeology's been done, done for a couple of years, years, but the home is almost, almost done. done. Um, um, we've been doing a lot at the Whitworth Farm, as you saw, in the last five or so years. What is, what is on the horizon? horizon? You never you know. know. Uh, um, I thought that was Jacob Campbell and Paul Lester did some archaeology. Yeah. 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 Why are we so interested in the cemetery versus any other kind of structure? <laughs> It was, it, was, it, was it was an attempt, attempt to confirm, confirm right? right? All, All we were trying to do was confirm, confirm that that, that was, was the right, right place so that we could protect, protect it, right? Right? And, and, and preserve, preserve it, right? It was just, just we wanted to know if they are great here, here, we're not going to let the farmer plow it anymore. We're going to mark it, we're going to interpret it, and that's that. So it was an attempt to preserve what we had. So we see some more of a question of that being a more sacred ground than, say, I mean, where the old you know, middle. Right, right. Yeah, it, it was a property, was a property that we purchased, purchased from, from Community Christ, Christ in 2012. So as so part of our due diligence, we, we wanted, wanted to know what we had after we purchased it. Yeah. Yes. yes. What, what are the, are the uh, next steps? Or what, how does, like, like on the, the uh, Whitbrook uh, Farm, or how does all this that's now coming in to you inform what you're going to do? Do you come up with proposals for interpretation? Do you reconstructions for their investigations. investigations. Yeah. What, do you do? what do you do? Good question. Good question. So, so Emily, Emily talked about cultural, cultural landscape, landscape reports like that code for completing, completing the cultural landscape, landscape report for Whitworth Farm, Whitworth Farm which, which will analyze how that landscape has changed, changed over time, time using historical, historical records and archaeological records, records and, and then, then make some recommendations for how to change the landscape to better reflect the period of significance, which at this point is the 1830s, right? And then, and how then did that cultural, cultural landscape, landscape report, report come from proposals that have to go online from things, things that, that we want, we want to, do to do there to make, to make that, that site a, a more accurate, accurate more authentic, and a better visitor experience? So, so, so also, 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 also look, look, try to find an architectural story that maybe specializes in Anabaptists of that region. So we can, so we can get, get, you know, there's, there's a chance, there's always a chance. Yeah, they're out there. They're out there. Yeah. 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 And so, so we work with our cultural historians and landscape historians and, and um, kind of material cultural culture experts, experts with the archaeological, the archaeological work, work to see what we can understand, understand about the Whitworth's property. And at the same time, as archaeologists, one of our historians have been digging into the historical record, right? All the minutiae that historians look at try to just tease out any kind of detail about the Whitworth farm and its setting in the family. So, so all, all of this data, data comes together in a series of proposals that will that ultimately, ultimately end up with, with you know, yeah, some kind of new experience, experience there for, for, for visitors. Hopefully, Hopefully by 2030. 20, 20, 
That's the goal. That's the goal. It's almost it's not time. time. <laughs> Any other Any questions? questions? We've, We've kept, kept you, you on the right. yes. yes. It's just a comment. If you don't look at the beginning of your education, you're going to have to for me things. And I feel like this whole presentation just like made a really great case for you to start working out because the beginning of it was like, well, we can only spray them. So do why did they need to keep on this? And then like five years, like, 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 wow, it's incredible how much is lost in such a relatively short period of time. So it so worked. worked. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, was the point. point. <laughs> <laughs> we made as, as prophylites in the historical yeah. 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 No, 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 that's the point, right? I feel especially in Utah, it is undervalued, right? People do not appreciate what our Delta and historical insight can do. But it shouldn't. We know we what know it can what do, do at the Native, Native American, American sites, 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 it's no different from historic, historic sites. sites. It's just, just that some people, people can't, can't see past, past their noses, noses in terms, terms of the type, the type of material, material culture, culture like, like it's broken, broken dishes. dishes. Cares, cares well. well. <laughs> it, matters it matters a lot. If we're if if truly really understand and want to understand the past, it makes all the difference. With that, I think we should close. Thank you.